So that's that's worth it. That's did I get too close to the camera on that one? A little bit too close. Should I should I oh should I back up a little bit? Okay, sorry about that. My bad. I've been awake for probably close to 32 hours. Like I have to like hold my keyboard like the normal way because if I do it, I feel like I have arthritis if I hold my keyboard like that. It blows my mind. I can never do that. Like, this kid, this guy right here, he's got his keyboard like off at an angle. His isn't that extreme. There's a kid all the way down to the far end who has his keyboard all the way at like a horizontal. Yeah. That's really cool. They're gonna be at that table right over there. Public information. Oh, I don't know. But <laughs> this isn't live, so it doesn't matter. It's not live, but like you and I know. Yeah, we know. I'm not gonna tweet it. Like awesome. What game do you play? Smash Bros. Who do you play? Is it embarrassing? Is it like Villager? Yeah. <laughs> is it Villager? Am I spot on? No, oh not, my god. Is it the Ice Climbers? No. Is it Game and Watch? No. Is it Pichu? No. Is it Wario? No. I can keep going. I think yeah, I can no, name every no, character no, in the game. I believe in you. Is it, did I say the Ice Climbers already? Yeah, you said them. Is no, it them? Is it them a second time? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, oh, is it one of the Lynx? Yes, it is. Is it Toon Link? It is. Oh, that is pretty embarrassing. Is that is rough. Who do you play? I'll give you $20 if you guess correctly right now. First try? First try. Give me a single hint. It's an obscure character. An obscure character. Not played very often. Is it We Fit Trainer? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my. I'm the interviewer for a reason, baby. I do what I do. I don't need the money. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. So Bowser Jr., We Fit, and I... <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> Are you all lying to me? Am I being gaslit? No, 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 Bowser no, no, Jr., We Fit, up. and you told me already. Oh, uh, Toon Link. Yep. Where are we being support at? Who are we playing this weekend? What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Esports U Network. Tonight, we've got ourselves some NGC AAE action on its way. And who better to take you through it than Catnator 3K and the six foot five man himself, Camel. Yeah, Nato, thank you for the introduction. As per usual, always a pleasure to be in the booth. And we have two very exciting teams here, Trinity Valley Community College and the Suffolk Sharks going at it here. Should be a very good contest. Yeah, that it should be. Teams revel up, almost ready to go here in this one. And we can take a chance to talk about these map picks going into it, Camel. Uh, mm. You might have noticed uh, if you're following around the scene patch of the game came through yesterday i believe uh, early yesterday and some changes to agents and some changes to maps as well one of those being a fracture change so to see that later on in the bands i don't think is too surprising yeah well it was disabled so uh you know that'll, for, that'll do it won't it yeah that'll do it according to uh the guidelines the nj double njc double a handbook uh fracture was disabled so not mm, going to be here for two a, weeks. i don't hate that I don't hate that either. There are a lot of ratty That's corners, smart. a lot of new corners to figure out. You know, I don't want the, right. I don't want to put the players in a bad situation. So we're going to be seeing Icebox. We're going to be seeing Ascent and Bind will be the decider if we do need that. Um, not really too sure about the rosters. There were a lot of players listed, so I'm interested to see yeah. where both of these rosters uh, end up at. So once we get into the game, we can see what happens here but icebox not really anything too crazy uh in terms of strategies perhaps we see something interesting i mean you know last night i was fortunate to cast uh the pit of valor and we saw at least me and uh, anton were able to mm -hmm. see some really interesting compositions from oxygen academy they're running triple sentinel don't know if we're going to see that here but uh always room for um different strategies and different compositions yeah, yeah especially right now uh those agent changes kind of fix the way flashers work, specifically KO and Sky. So they're less self sufficient now. Um, KO's right click, if you go ahead and pop it for yourself, almost guaranteed that player that you're pop flashing is going to be unblind by the time you actually get into the angle. So, same story with Sky. Uh, her flash now, wind up time is more. Uh, Reequipping her weapon is more so rather than flashing for yourself, the goal is to flash longer range. Also, players can't break it now. So that change, there's big changes to the way the initiators work. They don't really work as self-sufficient fraggers anymore, and more so as what they were intended to be purely support agents. So I think that changes rules a lot. Also, Reyna's leer is way better. Uh, and Reyna used to be what was the primary duels on Icebox. It allowed for players to just frag out. So if we've got players who are higher ranked in this lobby or better mechanically in this lobby arena i think makes total sense going to this one because i think she'll be super dominant yeah and well ask and you shall receive catnid it's going to be isa saga running the reina here along with at killjoy and chamber combo you have hate running with the fade and chad tones finishing off with the viper and on the other side of things for trinity valley they're going to be running with that single initiator, KO, Chamber, Jet, Sova, and Viper to finish off their composition as we head into Icebox here too. 
interesting compositions. That Reyna definitely going to be a Dark Horse pick, and I think we're going to have to track that and see how well Issa Saga does. Because Reyna, you know it. Everyone knows it. You need to be aggressive. You need to play with your team and play off of your initiator's flashes to have success. Yeah, absolutely. And with that Leer being stronger, it allows for not just the ability to play off your initiator, but the chance to play pretty hard off yourself. Yeah. She's got the ability to make big moments happen. And I feel like we used to talk about that. Like, man, this is going way back. This is the the old man back in my day speech. Like, mm. it used to be, if you're playing on Arena and you were playing on Icebox, it was always a question of, well, if the Arena can frag, they won. It's over. It's wraps. It's GG's. Um, and I feel like we're almost back to that with the fact that she does have that elevated flash potential. The KO pick, I think, is going to be very interesting to see if they can make those flashes worthwhile. Now, left clicks are super good on KO now. The right click, not so much. So it's a question of if they've already adapted to this patch that came through that was just yesterday. We've got hella Sentinel Prowess as well. It's going to be for Suffolk, so their post plant going to be deadly as they look to go early down to. Interesting pistol strategy here. CJ already forced to TP away, and B site will be the target for the Sharks as they push forward. A lot of confidence here. That wall providing a lot of safety, covering up a couple of these nifty corners that Icebox does provide, and the spike is already down just like that. And now all the control and kitchen and around the site going the way of the Sharks, and these right clicks are going to be massive for Jesse, finding two quick kills, and CJ, what can he do? All but die! Reflex if you do are able to find themselves out too, but it's Chateau's and hate to finish out the round. Suffolk able to come through tubes so quickly. That postal setup is there before anyone has anything to say about it. Trinity Valley, they've got to play completely for that retake. They start to work their way up Weather Station to get towards CT. And then that look into Kitchen was caught by what is a nasty crossfire. It's always awkward planning over into Cargo because it gets very hard to actually spread out and defend from there. A lot of the time, if you don't take extra space, it means that the retake team is able to get in so close that they kind of suffocate what is your post plant but in that scenario since they do take that extra face kitchen they have that extra avenue covered so those last three players when they do play through ct they're playing at a massive numbers disadvantage and it's easy trades the first round here of the first week of the regular season for the njc AAE. as the seven week round robin starts up here at sakura spot full of players as now the specters and vandals full flooding the site he's a saga grabbing one of his own hate grabs another and these vandals these specters so incredibly powerful now uh, well tvcc all they can really do is go for be a couple of picks here and there look for some trades some crossfires but nothing is going their way reflex does grab one kill but it's traded back he's a saga grabs two off the round yeah and uh moral of the story here for this team on their attacking side is going to be post plant their post plant will be so strong if there is not contest close onto the site so there is a close look trinity valley i am able to win it i mean it's their eco man they're not going to win it so all good now we get to look at them in what is their anti bonus this is around that they should definitely win and around that we want to see them play farther onto contact them they got to be on contact they've got to break you till early or they're never getting back into sight. I can guarantee you that much. So they're set up pretty far back here. No look towards B main at all. They're gonna give all that space away immediately. But fortunately for them, Suffolk not looking to take it right now. Oh. Okay. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's his head, but he's gonna be okay on the back of the wall. Sakura, not EXC. It's one of the first Leer. That's one of the shots here on towards Jesse. Great first kill for the duelist of Trinity Valley. That's gonna snuff off this push, at least for a brief moment, more than totally being invested. But now with this wall, it's so difficult to push through. Nar somehow finds a Marshall kill through the wall, and now that's gonna be the ghost of the push forward to Kora. Still behind the box, still working around hate. Shots find their target, and the Sharks, they're gonna take this one right back over to B. They know the players have rotated. Yeah, can we just talk about that utility usage from Suffolk to get in? They wait so long there. They wait for that screen to come down so they actually have vision going into it. And then they take vision away from that jet that's playing on the back of green box as well. So they throw that Leer towards the top. The jet has a choice now. I can either swing to shoot Leer or I can swing to shoot players. Swings to shoot players and gets caught out because, well, they can't see nothing. They're nearsighted. So utility is fantastic in that prowler to isolate them into that back of sight position as well. Really makes that a difficult scenario to win. Now they've got themselves a numbers advantage and they've got themselves a chance on this post to win on a bonus. Starts there, reflex. Finding one. Another crucial kill going to Juju. And the whiffs are coming in. It's a saga grabbing. Death warrant there. It's gonna be up to hate in a 1v2. Great first shot there. The eye though goes wide. 
Hate finds a third kill. He's got a 3k. Is there time for Trinity Valley? Doesn't look like there is. Hate will readjust. Not able to find the kill. A colossal undertaking for Hate. And he somehow is able to win the round. That looked going Trinity Valley's way. Catator, I, I don't really know. I don't know. Man. I the hill. They started falling down and somehow found a foothold towards the end of the round. By the way, Hate. Man. That one, that retake from Trinity Valley looked pretty winnable. Able to use those rifles to win some close contact fights that you don't really expect them to win, but sometimes, hey, the mechs are better, the shots are better, Peeker's advantage exists, and they, they're able to take that out. So they get the spacing, hate comes through, Haunt hits the wall, doing it all raw all on his own in gunfights, just ends up winning the job. So hero play is fantastic for Suffolk, who gets them that bonus round win, and now they're oh. ch absolutely chilling. One HP, three right now, four. Sakura, as the Nightfall is going to be invested, they want to know exactly where these players are. As Dewey has some pop flashes ready, but how are you going to deal with this overarching aggression? They're just going to take the site in full force. What can you do with this gun disadvantage? CJ finds one kill, the Catinator, the damage has been done. Maybe Jesse dies here, he does. Good trade. Everything is textbook, Catinator. Not much you can do about this for Trinity Valley. It's going to be 4-0 to zero in favor of the Sharks. Yeah, hard choice there. In terms of Trinity Valley, I mean, we talked about the fact that we know that they need to play on what are these closer contact angles, but it's their eco round, so it's harder to do so, right? Because the weapon is down, but I mean, the same concept of the weaponry downgraded for them, it's going to be hard to retake as well. And I mean, they don't expect the Nightfall to come through. It's their eco round, but so folks, no funny business. Want to guarantee round wins, want to keep the snowball alive. And so they'll go ahead and throw the Nightfall into it. And to be honest, their execute has been pretty good without the Nightfall. So I can respect it going into that round just to guarantee. They're up 4-0 here. It's into rifle rounds. Trinity need this round win and one more after to solidify Eco. What matters now is they're cycling ultimates. Now we see the Viper's Pit, the Empress, the Court of Force available. Nisa Saga, he's got all the confidence in the world and why the hell not? He is Reyna, he needs to be the aggressor. He's doing it right here, right now, Magumino. Still unknown oh. and unnerving aggression. He's able to fight two before it's all said and done. Hate takes two kills of his own. Now, moving back into the site, a 3v2 reflex has this Viper Spit. He has a couple of tags to play with, but he's getting beamed from Ness. He's got to be careful. Plops down and do invest the Viper Spit here, Cat Nader. He can't. Remember. Spike recovered. He'll step away. And that Haunt looking for a reconfirm. So I won't scan anything. They don't know if players are on that side or not. So I think that means the Killjoy is a lot more aggressive here on this angle. Already going to be looking for opportunities towards CT. Making sure no one's coming through just yet. Now they know, okay, nothing on the Haunt. But there are players still far away so here. We've got plenty of time to set up for the post plant. And you'll see them get a lot more aggressive on it because of it. They played pretty hard into close contact on their post plants. I would like to see them slow down a bit though. That Torah Force is going to be online. Okay, there we go. Great calls. Total Force is online towards yellow. They can use that for the actual contact. Nars got information, so it can back this one all the way up. He stalled for a bit of time. He can use that util from the Sentinel as well to do even more. That kill the chart will go to the top of Weather Station. They've got to shoot it down first. Knows about where these players are going to come from, and that allows this post plant to now step just a little bit farther forward. I don't even know if you take this one for Trinity. You've got no money. You can get two rifles out of this round, try to play a little hero rifle forced by action on the next one, and that is going to be the call. I mean, there's no way getting back into that one. Two Sentinels still set up. The Fade's going to have Haunt back up available, and you got a tour de force to worry about. So they stepped away. It'll be a 5 0 scoreline, and that spike explodes. Great execution there from Suffolk Community College. 5 0, and it is getting to that point where you really start to wonder where can Trinity Valley go? Where can they? change up the strategy is the answer maybe ulting one part of the map giving reflex some time over at a maybe giving that viper's pit some breathing room allowing reflex to hold that site and maybe using your resources on b it's going to be tough i mean there's there's definitely some options but it just really feels like you know hate is popping off especially isa saga is not even doing that great in the grand scheme of things cat and he was the one we were highlighting to make those aggressive plays he's gotten his kills but Right now, it's really just a collective effort by the Sharks, and that's why they're winning 5-0. to zero. Yeah, and the, the util usage has been absolutely everything here. So Trinity Valley are going to set up an extra player now. Trades back to the A site. Not the KO, though. So they're not going to be able to break this utility that's been the issue for them on site. Walls up. So full, usually waiting for that wall, and it's going to be the same story. They've haunted the player generate already. Not going to make that same mistake twice as they did last round. Just a little bit of oversight. Didn't check on the generator spot at all we're caught off guard they should know do that tether that there is going to be a player on a generator walls down now is a chance to execute forward they're going 
gonna do just that. Jesse, steady. It's that first shot onto Sakura. The jet already gone. Nara takes down Reflex. CJ will fall one by one. It is a clinic right now for the Sharks. Trinity Valley can do nothing but watch. It's lavish. It's simple. It's a flawless round here for Suffolk Community College. Six to zero. You're right back to where you started. Just the repeat process. Now, though, Catnator, five ultimates. All of you can buy. This has to be where you change up your strategy. You have to win this one. Yeah, you got to win this one for sure. Need something in the bank for this team. And it takes that five volts to do it, man. That's what it's going to be. This util has been so good from Suffolk. And it's ironic. We're talking about the fact that, well, uh, we expect you, Sasaga, to be the, the big fragger going into this one due to those initiator changes. And ironically, has been a better initiator in this one. Has been throwing that Leer, has five assists because of it, is constantly the reason they're able to get into the back of the A side and get so deep. CJ found one early. That's an ultimate out, an ultimate that's found value. Sets the opposing chamber gone. He was the entry fragment to the last round. That could make things a little bit more difficult for Suffolk to play forward, considering the fact they are using that pseudo duelist of the chamber with his rendezvous to take extra space. So that space has to come by other means. It's like it'll be a lockdown towards A, and well, society's been caught as well. 5v3, this is the best situation the Valley have had all game long. Can they use it to their advantage? They're going to know where the planter is. Will Hunter's Fury be popped here? The answer is yes. There we go. Pretty Valley trying to get some more value out of this one here. The bomb is already down. They have mollies on this. Chad Tones potentially looking more way out of this. There's a good tag. Hate on the flank here. Trying to get more done. He's going to be sprayed, though, from Boiler and drop by Magui. 2v4, still a couple of ultimates here for Trinity Valley to play with, but it's going to be tough. Infinite options for the defensive side, pushing back into the site. This Chad just waiting, lurking on this wall. There's the first bit of contact. Gnar going to grab another one. It's a 1v2. Chops are there for Chad Tones. Now on a 1v1. Time is not on Magui's side. It's a 50-50. There's no time to work with Chad Tones. Embraces the challenge. He's got a 3k on top of it all. 7-0 here for the Sharks. Dominant. In this first game, we're gonna get a replay of how that all panned out. Yeah, you see this here. This uh, virus pit, or this toxic screen is going to go up to try to guarantee themselves a little bit of space. It does get them to the back of the site, but then you have to try to step forward to actually clear the players out because they've still got the util that you need to worry about. We talked about how good this team is on the post plant when it comes to both NAR, when it comes to Chad Tones, lineup Larry's completely activated. You need to be able to kill those players. So do, even though they throw that screen, it's good for them because it gets in the back of the site, but they have to get farther, right? So you enjoy to throw like a flashpoint there or something to get them the space to actually clear that maze angle safely. The coordination's not quite there on the retake and you see it evidently. Off the leer, Saga gonna take all this space. The Prowler, getting a bit more intel. There's the first bit of Molly ship damage. Lisa Saga in trouble, it's gonna be revealed. A bit of chip damage goes his way and CJ finalized the kill. A lot of chaos here. In the only goings of this round, Hate gets one of his own secure with a trade back. The Molly's even doing some damage. Reflex in trouble. Long range logistics for Jesse. As he finds that kill, a 2v1 for Sakura. And a dream here looking for the 8-0 start. Are the Sharks? I see extremely low. First knife goes wide. The dash is now gone. Great shot there on Denar. Now the Jet in a 1v2. Sakura grabs the 4K, grabs the clutch. Magnificent showing there. Could have been a mechanical prowess for the Jet here for Nidhi Valley. Finally picking up a round. They've got themselves a round. It means mm. that max loss bonus is going to be gone. So they need to win this one as well. The words of the late great Kobe Bryant, job not finished. They got themselves around. They need this one as well. If they want to guarantee they can keep buying in the future. A very big turning point round for them. They get this one. There's a chance they grab a couple extra and that half is going to be a little easier. So Fulk going back to what they know, looking like they're going to go back to that ex exec right now. They've caught two. They've caught the duelist, if you will, very early in this one. Oh, that's a nice pick as well. Jesse falls. No more trip. No more flank watch. Do Trinity Valley decide to look for late lurk mid? Do they expect a player in that area? We'll see what happens. There is a player watching over from Boiler, but Chad Tones, he knows it. He takes down CJ. This is going to be a rotation. And now, Trinity Valley, they have to worry about this player lurking through mid catinator. They know about it as well. They've moved 
looks over towards kitchen. It'll be two oh, players, man. in fact. This timing <gasps> could be everything here for the Viper. And Chad Jones has caught one. Hate stepped into the site. He's like, I don't know see. about Juju, but Will now will hear the shots. Let's walk right past the Viper on site. Timing still everything in this round. Hate's found one. The Haunt gonna give information to Reflex and a chance to swing. So Hate's got all this space now to be created. Probably gonna come through off of his initial Haunt line. There's two 1v1s. Both sides of the map here are reload straight oh. in the open, but the shot on the cross not found. So we'll be able to stay alive and now the coordinate on the attacking side to play this 1v2. If they kill Magui, that's an easy plant. He's got the null command ready, but no utility, no flashes. And we see now where the sharks are going. Oh, what a read. What a journey they're taking now. Moving back over to the A site. They're going to have 13 seconds, more than enough time to plant. Chad Tones has two mollies to play with. We'll see where the plant goes. They don't know where these players are. I think it's Chad Jones is going to get caught. He's dead. Now it's a 1v2. 1v2. Magui, believe, out of utility. Except for that zero point. That was the one thing that recharges. So is going to have the information. This player's got to be close. And I'll take the contact because of it. Hayden to the angle. He's found one. Three bullets and a dream. No utility to play with. A Viper's Pit is online if Reflex wants to play with it. Zero bullets for Hate. Another fake defuse here. He reloads out in the open. The timing not in his favor. And Hate blows the play. Reflex, though, credit to him. The aim is on point. He grabs the second round. Crucial for Trinity Valley. And they're going to make this one 2-7 to seven after nine rounds. Bro reloaded on the final swing. That's like opening mm. your car door towards the street without looking, bro. Got his door ripped off. Insurance not going to cover that. That's your own fault. Come on, my man. Not like this. And what is such a close moment, a chance to break some eco down and get yourself a guaranteed another round. That is unfortunate to have it go that way. And you got to give credit to Trinity Valley. They switched. Oh, Trinity Valley, excuse me. They switched up their hold on the back of the A site. They put a player to Rafter instead of what they've been doing, which they're back to doing this round of putting this jet towards the back of Generator, which he was getting completely utiled out, completely useless, wasn't able to do anything in the round. And the same story with this player onto Heaven, who's stuck there in that leer and can't actually get a peek out. So they're back to where they used to be. This utile is going to hurt them. Reflex has the Spider Spit if he wants to pop that as well. So a plethora of options for Trinity Valley is Chad Tones was able to find that early pick in mid as the round started. Now he has a ton of space in Kitchen. Trip was moved over. See all of that space the Viper is taking. Meanwhile, though, on the A site, still shenanigans brewing as Hate's gonna find a kill. Chad Tones, remember, is still lurking, shifting around inside of mid. Grabs a third kill. Chad Tones unleash the beast. He is popping off right now in this round. He is upset. He is angry. Secure able to readjust and fire onto Hate, but it's still a 3v1 cat eight, but it is a whole lot harder to deal with this now with no dash available. CT player gonna be tucked in. Chad Tones will have it from the rat spot eight to two for Suffolk community and well money not going to be what you'd like it to be for Trinity Valley thinking about scrapping this one together I don't think that Vandal stays in the hands very long no it does not so it'll be a judge for the Viper possibly a Viper's pit play going into this round but the way that Suffolk's been controlling every part of the map they've been sending in these last couple rounds on the default two players towards a player B main and then into mid to look towards top of tube or under tube as well it means that if you do throw a virus pit early you can't really trust it because I've got so much map control all the time yeah look there's only one player posture towards a when this goes up now oh that and he died even worse fortunate unfortunate to say the least cat Nader can't win them all can't win them all but it's still good news. They have three players alive. Maybe they can. Okay, they have two players alive. Wow. It's getting, hey, take that back. <laughs> it's getting a little tougher to find things that they should be happy about. <laughs> because right now they're losing the A site. They might lose this 1v1 duel here. Jesus Saga pushing forward actually oh! loses Stinger buff. The whole near sided. Stinger is meta. They're going to have two air to play with these short corners, but hey, he's not falling for any tricks. He's got those two kills 29 HP and a dream, and his teammates even trying to kill him. That just shows how fun the Sharks are having right now, playing with their food. It's 9-2. I'm shocked he had that kill. Full, nearsighted, secure. A different beast. 
on one way from Bladestorm here in this one. Null Command's going to be up, so if that Util Dump does come back through, they got a chance to at least try to stall the one out, possibly stall out all that Sentinel Util on the retake. The only issue is, typically, when you go to play lineup in terms of Sentinels, you're, you're backing, backing up as far back as possible for your lineup. So we'll see if that situation comes to hand. Trinity Valley kind of on the back foot here just because of how versatile Suffolk's been lately. Already two up mid. Already a kill from Nest. Flash oh. through Juju, the timing. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate. It's a saga. That's that one and everyone in harmony taking their 1v1s and winning them. The Viper's Pit into secure a site, secure up. No one cleared Jen. Into the Viper's Pit he goes. They don't clear Generator and they're going to get punished for it. And the kills flood back in favor of Trinity Valley. Somehow, some way, it's a 2v2 and the spike is down. Nar needs to find value here. Mm. Lurking through mid. He should see the barrel pretty oh, soon. Nah, he FOV on the scope. Season oh, now no, out, out of the op. There oh. we go. It's a little oh, the scope covered that barrel. Gets out of it in time. Is able to see as it was on the frag. Secure endo 1v2. It's picked up the first onto the low chamber. Second player going to be coming towards mid. That's where that pick did come through, but it's back towards spawn. So does he know? Does he check in time? He does not. That's going to secure the 2-10 start here. Nar across from mid. Screens that op shot. And, well, I mean, now we have a pistol round that's uh, pretty much must win for Trinity Valley. You know, maybe five stack mid, get the frenzies going. Something to throw your opponents off guard, Cadman. I don't know if you have any sort of strategies like to employ in your own solo queue games, but uh, if you had any ideas, now would be the time to express them to me. Uh, you know, man, I'm a little concerned. Okay. Oh no, I don't. I don't want to be that guy, mm -hmm. but I'm a little concerned, just due to the fact that. Trinity Valley, Val oh my, why do I keep saying, bro? Trinity Valley needs their KO to throw good flashes, and they're still they're playing old patch KO. It, yeah, yeah. As long as they can throw a left click flash, I you know, there's a chance. Especially with the there good is dash. good well, flash. Hey, there you go, and that should allow for some space. But well, Jesse deals with the early entry Magui though with the trade onto Isasaga. Juju grabs another. This is the pistol round that they need to win. Trinity Valley looking to do just that, but hey. Main man for this Sharks roster, still alive and well with 45 HP in a dream. He's got a 1v2 on his hand. He did hear one of those players drop, but he is now in a whole world of trouble. Dealing with two feisty members of Trinity Valley at full HP. He's got a recon dart. Yeah, but how do you deal with this pressure? The spike is down. Trinity Valley have to come to hate, but they play together. This shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll see what happens for hate. What do you want to see, Catenator? Have him here, it's gonna be tough. There's the first stink. Oh. oh, that's what you wanna see, Still clearly. Two bullets. He's gotta reload. He's got the recon ready. 35 seconds now. As hate waiting. Anticipating an early push. Gonna move back over towards Nest. What a read here. The loop back. Doesn't know where this player is. Does he check below himself? He's gotta mm -hmm. run through the timing. He'll know. He'll have the advantage on this angle. Can he hit the shot is going to be the question. 10 oh, seconds. If you're the Sova, you gotta make a move. Thinking about the peak, it's gonna come no! through. The shots are there for Hay to win it out of 4K for Hay. He clutches up. Oh, 11 to 2, the score line. They'll steal the pistol away, rob it away, snatch it. Go on right under their noses. It started there. Magui falling gives hate the space and. Unfortunate, uh, but it happens, and you know, hey, just saw it with the ghost, and it was the, it was this teeter totter, it was this back and forth. What was Juju gonna do? And he ended up peeking, and that's the 4K for the fade. 19, seven and four for hate right now, and it's bad. It's pretty rough. Well, they're not. Done. Oh, oh, they're just pushing oh, forward. Oh. It's a 4K for Chatone. He wants more. Give him the ace. Come on, he's calling for it. He's hollering. He needs this. Sees and hits. Juju falls the ace. Enormous for Chad Tones. He is excelling the Ice Prince here on Icebox. 12 to 2 in favor of the Sharks. Another replay here. And it started with the Spectre. It ends with the Spectre. Chad Tones, just no fear. That hurt me. 
and I'm not even in the game. Uh, yeah, I know. And neither am I. I it felt that in my chest. Oof. Man, if you wanted to have any sort of momentum, it just got crushed in B main. It got taken out to the back alley, and it, it knew that its time was coming. Hate watching this cross have his haunt broken. There's a miniature gap in the smoke. Both players will take damage, but will oh, survive the, the top two player will find one. Big timing there works in favor of Trinity Valley. Now Nar, this Marshall in hand, had a couple of opportunities, forced to fall back, waiting for his teammates to arrive. And now the Mollies will force him out of his position, but he doesn't care. He's unfazed, unwilling to give up this position on yellow. Finally, Reflex though, pushes forward. Floats over with the Stinger, picks up the Marshall, but the Spectre too powerful for Suffolk Community College. 13 to two dominance there in game one, Catnator. And I mean, it was really over before it started. Now we move into game two. Now we move into Ascent. And really for Trinity Valley, you have to imagine it's a full mental reset. Yeah, just go right back into the game with your confidence up and your morale high, keeping those comms in control and clean because still winnable, you never know. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it could just be your day, and sometimes it can't be your day. We'll see what happens in game Can't, two. can't well, tell them the yeah. tell them the bad news. Tell chat the bad news. Actually, Prussian, would it be would it be possible to get the the map select graphic for the lower third? With what, is that an option? I'd love that. Can we, yeah, can we, can we go and pull that up for me? Can't, hey, you know what? Let's play a game in the chat. Well, ten seconds. Ten seconds here. Mm. Tell me in the chat. I can't see it because it's a delay, but we'll pretend that I can see it. Tell me in the chat what you think the problem is right now. Looking at this graphic. Ten seconds. Gamble, <laughs> gamble. Please yep. tell the people at home what of is course. it. Well, what do you see? Well, it was see this pick TVCC. And I see that, and then I see the scoreline of the game. I see the scoreline of the game. I think I see the problem. I think I see the issue. Yeah, look, I don't. Look, there is one bright side to all this, right? Ascent is a map that can go either way. A hundred percent. Ascent is a map that is very comfortable for everybody. It's been here forever. You know how to play it. I promise you. Uh, it also typically is playing under. The fade KO. So that that's the downside looking at this one for Trinity Valley. But on the bright side, they should know Ascent inside and out. And realistically, since it has been just a day on this patch, I think Suffolk probably still plays the fade KO too. But maybe not because they just played Double Sentinel. And that is definitely a switch up. It's something that we don't typically see on Icebox either. But yeah, it is unfortunate when you walk into what is your opponent's map pick and take it so confidently. It makes it so hard for your opponent to to come back in and feel comfortable on what is a pick that is not theirs, but it's not their instant ban. So we'll see. See how Ascent looks for them. Hopefully better. Hopefully better. But uh, I think Compositions is a big one in that. I think uh, the KO just couldn't really find value anywhere because it started out right over on towards A, and that zero point timing just wasn't enough to try to stop the utility that came through. Uh, and then eventually just moved it away from A because they just could not get the timing down. I think that really is where the issue ends up being. Like, so consistently, for so folk, those first couple rounds that were going over towards just A were Prowler towards the back of Generator. Okay, I've info this player and I was going to be here. Beer over the top as soon as that screen goes down. So now this player that we've just isolated to Gen to go backside box is stuck having to take a fight with what is two, three players. Uh, and then on top of that, their Viper Toxic screen is coming up. That's blocking off all the screen side. So they've got this comfortable fight to take back of sight. If you're playing them on contact, right, which was in that composition, playing against what is such a strong post plant comp with those Sentinels, kind of has to try to fight for that site control. They're looking at what is two players on site up against five in, in a very isolated gunfight in that space thanks to Util. There's no way they're going to realistically win that. And by then, I mean... They start bringing more players over towards A. They're looking at three players over. And then Suffolk reads that pretty easily. He goes, okay, we'll put one. We'll put two players over towards A main to start to keep giving them that default conditioning. And the rest of the gang is going to head towards mid. It's going to head towards B main. So this team can never, ever get comfortable. So it's a little bit of Trinity Valley not being able to find ways to stop the util. But it's also the fact that Suffolk's util is just so good.
Well, we will see if Trinity Valley can fix the UTIL problem and get back into this series here in our game two, which will be coming up after this quick break. Don't go anywhere. That, that's why we're here, right? This is why every, a lot of people are trying to figure out, you know, how do we replicate what you guys are doing? How do we, you know, how do they do what you guys are doing to a degree? Or why are you guys doing what you're doing to a degree? But you know, to kind of, I think, focus in then a little bit more, I, I want to talk about gameplay a little bit before we jump into to business and, and all of the other stuff, you know, Jensen, this one, this one's for you, right? I want to talk a little bit about this because to, to someone like me, who's, you know, who's traditionally a League of Legends fan and all that, I know that you've been a coach that's been, you know, all over the world. You've worked with a lot of different professional teams and different regions. Um, my my question, I I I I really want. I think a lot of people want to know how did you end up at Maryville and, and why North like a North American collegiate college? What was the draw? Or what what brought you here? How did you get to this point? Um, when I first came to NA, I worked with the models uh, with the academy team, and I realized that there's a lot of culture challenges that exist in. It's very unique to any any esports, right? Where there's this very interesting intersection, uh, because in unlike traditional sports in esports, uh, players they don't start training with under a structure or, or a system or a coach uh, from a very early age, which is what which is what happens if you want to pick up any other sport, right? Like you start going to community events or whatsoever, and then you start developing your skills and your literacy of the game from a, from the age of six or seven, and you're very used to working in a team environment, a coaching environment. But in esports and for League of Legends, a lot of times uh, players, they go through a, they, they go up, they climb the ranks in solo queue where everything is basically self-taught. And then all of a sudden they need to be placed into a team environment. And I realized that this is something that the Asian teams got right, where they had this these B teams, this, they have the B houses in Korea and Taiwan, um, you would spend almost close to a year just being a understudy or training partner for the team before you even join an academy team in the first place. And uh, in China, they have like these massive uh, beating systems with like lots of players in them. The moment you hit a certain rank on the ladder, they fly you in. Uh, you are then boot camping for a month there at the facility. And depending on how well you do, uh, they then decide whether to regain you on as a training uh, partner or as a trainee in whatever capacity given how well you perform in those scenarios. So um, the West was very lacking in all of this. And culturally, to do the same things and try to replicate the B-House environment or what they do in China or Taiwan. Welcome back, everyone, here to the NJC AAE regular season, week one of this seven-week round robin. I am Camel. Joined alongside me is Catinator to 3K for our second game here in this best of three between Suffolk Community College and Trinity Valley Community College. We're going to Ascent. You talked about the utility Catinator being so pivotal here for 
this game too. And we have a couple of substitutions. Uh, not really too sure who's coming out, who's coming in. We will see that though once we get into the game here, once Aiden Select does start. Yeah, I'm prepping for the Aiden Select. I'm really interested to see what initiators come out. Mm -hmm. Very much so. It's been fade KO all the way since that dynamic duo got discovered about four months ago. It has been nothing, but it has just been so very successful that no one's even thought to play anything different. And that goes from every single skill level and pretty much every region as well. So we'll see if we get different looks. Uh, for a minute, a brief minute, albeit, but for a minute, we got to see Phoenix get worked onto this map. Mm. And I think now with this recent patch, Phoenix would be a very good option in terms of entry flash potential. I don't think it can be the sole duelist because you still need to be able to take space onto the site. But I do think the Phoenix has a lot of value with flashes. But for the case of this game, I think we still get the traditional. And that is looking like the case, except Suffolk is doing their own thing. Yeah, I mean, they have a, essentially, besides Issa Saga and Jesse, a completely different roster here. As we head into Ascent, both teams doing really their own thing, like you said see how these strategies do develop and we see where this utility becomes a factor how they can use it to their advantage because that really seemed like a big part of the problem in that game one on icebox for trinity valley but then again uh this is basically an entirely different team so you know and a lot of the players that were fragging out are now gone for trinity or for suffolk community college rather i should say so Trinity Valley, maybe they're feeling a little bit more confident going into this game, perhaps. We'll see how they do pan out. Really, the pistol round kind of shows how this, you know, composition will start out for Trinity Valley. We'll see where they do benefit from. But I think it's going to obviously, you know, be off the back of Secura entering in with Magugi. You talked about that kind of being so pivotal, the flash plays uh, for that KO. I told you, due to the fact that we got initiator changes, we might see different looks. And Suffolk has given me the world's most different look. They're running double Sentinel. So they're going to run their chamber as that uh, as that opping agent. And then, of course, good utility the defense. The killer has a phenomenal utility. But they got no flashes. So we'll see the implications of that. We think it's really hard for them. Jesse up close to Shorty gets caught. Magugi has that one. And they've got the space towards Cat already. We should try to hold on to it. Has picked up two. Two taps and two frags. Reflux with the trade back to the direction. Spike just a little bit out of reach. Help of a scaffold player right now. Got to recover that one if you want a chance at a rotation. Reflex. Let me use the star to get into the site now. Could have rotated, but they opt for the A hit. Isasaga has some shock darts to play with. He'll just use his gun instead. Finds one, spots the second player on Jenny. Exposes his skull and allows the first kill to come through. But energy is able to solidify and secure the round. It was a little gutsy. It was a little... Bit of a chaotic first round, but it goes the way of the Sharks, even with this new roster here. Piss around, we'll go over to Suffolk, and haven't seen any force looks from Trinity Valley, so I feel like we do get that same story into this one. That does like the case. Fading even buying Util going into this one. Looks like it'll be a quick A round. Get this one over with, hope for a spike plant, and keep things pushing. The read's going to come through from Suffolk. This one's going straight towards B, and that read is looking like to our all-seeing eyes not accurate. So there's a chance for Trinity Valley to get something cooking here, especially if they catch his omen on early contact. Walking into a smoke with that judge. That's going to be pretty devastating. Energy grabs the early kill onto Reflex. And now, did Jesse hear those footsteps? Not too sure, but if he did... They might try to look for some space up through mid and tiles. You see, that's where Levi is going. He's made so much ground, and now going to look to peak the timing. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how this does work for the Sharks, but B is going to be the hit, but they're moving into the Killjoy Catenator. It spells trouble. Yeah, interesting rotational call. Started out towards A, saw some pretty early pressure, and decided they're going to try to take back towards B late after a cut of noise. Peak's coming through now, and they're recognizing those players still going to be here, and this flank is on its way already. The chamber's going to step into B main. Going to pick up one a second as well. And this one's going to be pinched so very fast. A 3k now for the chamber. The rest of the team on their way. CJ, headhunter in a dream, and he'll be caught out. It's a 4k for the flanker. It's a 2-0 scoreline. And Levy's got such good space there and towards mid. Here's all those footsteps of the players as they make their way out of 
defender sp or attacker spawn all the way into what is going to be that look and be main here's it knows it's coming is able to step so far forward and that's easy flanks for them it's a lot of money in the pocket the chance to upgrade if they wanted to but it is of course a bonus so they will not do such a thing they'll be playing with these bonus weaponry and they've got the read this one might posture a instead due to all that killjoy utility now being known about from trinity valley and i guess right they're gonna move into this smoke now this is a judge on the other side of this do you want to push through and the answer is yes they're gonna see oh, the judge the now but jesse is able to find one levi finds a second before tping away to safety and this push has completely been flubbed the spike now is in a horrid position levi though whips a few headhunter shots that's gonna matter because cj will grab the kill levi holding steady looking for the shots finds the first fight the second headshot and levi turns around the eco He's got the Tour de Force online if he wants to go for this reflex into 2v1, has stars to play with, but doesn't have the bomb. Reflex and step out of cat. 1v2 and a good crossfire to be set up. Oh, and he will look no. towards Jen, will be caught from main instead. Energy is going to pick that one up. It'll be 3 0 successful bonus converted for Suffolk. They'll get themselves two shiny vandals out of the round. They're happy to grab them for free. No better price point, if you ask me. Is the team going to upgrade? We'll get. The Odin on the map moving forward, and well, where else would the Sova go with that thing other than towards B? You know, I would say guaranteed around, but we saw what the Stinger can do, Catnid. You cannot sleep on the Stinger buffs. They are True. real and they are here. So for the Sharks, going to have to make sure they don't take too many close angles. That dart is actually going to connect onto the Fade itself, allowing Issa Saga grab that first kill now shock is raining in isa saga utility is playing a massive role here so much damage with all the wall bangs and shock darts isa saga forces this push to be snubbed Damn. out and that's a 3k for the sova the push is gone maybe you go through tiles his reflex look for a cheeky kill to catenator i mean this round's over before he even starts Ooh, arm spotted reflex has to step out into danger jesse has that one CJ has been the one player to sneak away from everything. He's made it to the top of Cat, but is slowly being encroached upon. Is going to back up. Sees Dart. Will cross will be seen on the cross, or maybe oh, yeah. not. So they won't know that he's tucked into spawn. No, they've cleared everything else. So, I mean, you run down the checklist. Only one option left. CJ will pick up one with the head under before Sasaga. Wow. Inevitably, the player to start and close the round. A 4K for the Sova, a 4 0 scoreline. For Suffolk, gun round now on its way. Yeah, I mean, you can pick and choose. You want to push into a Killjoy, the Sova, Odin, Spam. It's it's really just a battle here for Trinity Valley to find a way maybe going through mid, perhaps, could be the call. Using the Divide in some way to get on the site, really going to be difficult. But again, Catnator, I'm struggling at least to see that engage that we want to see with Magubi and Sakura, that two-man combo with those new flashes, you really need to be able to communicate with your team to make that Asian worthwhile. And so far, it's been pretty rough. And now we're going to see a new change of pace here, Cat. That's going to be a force tack moving in through Cat. Energy's so close here to this one. These Cat players have flashed themselves into initial space. CJ going to pick up one for free. So energy will fall. The Tortoise Force has found a bit of value as a flank on its way. And Reflex has got all the way up towards Garden. I believe he's caught. Sasaga's picked up that flank, as previously mentioned, that mid player. Barrel spotted on the cross. Jesse has info towards one. Looking for the player on site has found that as well. The Hunter's Fury, that tag gives a little Whoa. value as well. Jesse to pick up another. Looking for that third. It's a flank on its way towards Cat. This is Fade all wow. alone. And Jesse going to pick that one up as well. So a 3k from Generator. The patience pays off. Back of sight for the Omen. We have 5 0 scoreline. They get all that space in towards Cat, but since they've got no actual contestion, in that area, they're not able to get any picks. It means all the utils still available for stuff folk to get themselves back in. That was clean. We're going to see a replay of that. Jesse, really cool, calm, and collected with the shots. He already knew there was at least one player close to him. He saw him earlier when Sakura dashed in and the rest of it. History with the 3K. And yeah, the Sharks, even with this new roster with all these new players inserted into the lineup, no change in terms of how dominant they are over their opponents as Trinity Valley after five yet to secure a round win. And we'll see if this is the time. Again, moving back in towards Jesse's crosshair. 
It's not going to be a good fate. The paranoia just to deny a bit more. But again, he's already away, and that's a 5v4 instantaneously off the route. Think about the TP away as well. We'll come through. Info, the players have not rotated just yet. Oh, he's going to actually have to stick this TP. So a site has been completely open, but Jesse's going to be here in this space if they do decide to rotate. It's a question of if Suffolk can sell the fact there is still defensive aggression on the side in their nah, He's read pretty hard into the fact this team's rotated that they have not. It means Trinity Valley going to walk into this one for free. They've got themselves a divide and a null command in terms of post-plant utility. Now it's eco, so weaponry going to be low here, but there's a chance that this one left click flashes through into the site they'll go. Plant's going to go down. Do they use these ultimates to try to hold? Potentially, but there's no trip. Gonna walk through that. Smoked off. Now, Juju with the plant. Saga has a bit of spam. Now he's gonna be pressed up upon by Secura. That's that share, remember. Now they're getting pincered on numerous fronts. It's so difficult. Jesse grabs the first kill. Isasaga grabs another. Worried about every single nook and cranny, but it's too much to deal with. All of the pressure. It's an avalanche. And it crushes Trinity Valley on their save. It was a decent idea. But again, another flawless. Just not able to find any value with those stingers. Gun diff, baby. Gun diff. Just a gun diff in that round on the retake. It's so easy for them to get back into that one. There's nothing really stopping them either. Since then, that util does come out on that one. And you're going to be pretty confident when you've got yourself a full rifle team going into what you know is just stingers, just classic. So an easy one to be picked up for them. Trinity Valley, they get the site for free, but not able to hold on. At least they get a little bit of eco because of it, because they do get that plant down. So a little extra money never hurt anyone. A little extra creds in the pockets. And well, they're going to look to go towards top cat here. A new look for them. They haven't really played too hard towards mid scaling. They're working cap pretty quick. There is a player though in the smoke. Energy. He wow, grabs two he kills, two. the dash away, shifting and sliding his way through everyone. And is a saga is there to clean it up. A 3k back to back flawlesses. And that was the buy round for Trinity Valley. Slash FF. I, mean, I just broke my keyboard. I would be breaking my keyboard. I would be breaking my mouse. Holes would be in the wall. Oh man, Juju's not having the best of games right now. Googie is struggling, Secura is struggling, nobody is finding any value. I mean, are you buying here? What's the call? You have four ultimates, Catnator, but I, I don't really know if, no, I'm not if buying there's a way. Here. Yeah, I'm not buying here yeah, either. Yeah, I'm not right? buying here for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's tough, man, because they, they really do try to give a new look. They try to put scale cat, and they get caught by energy who just spams two through smoke. They try to do the same thing again, able to dash out straight into Prowler nearsighted, and Cloudburst to get away. So good reaction to come from the jet. Both players going to be known about towards A, but there is a third. There's a chamber here close as well. So they do want to wrap around towards Gaffle. It's going to be scary for him. They've got the early look from Vazui, but he's been caught completely out. The Guo picked that one up. That spike working its way towards spawn. They got to be careful though. If this Silva finds it, it's going to shut this entire play down early. Reflex has picked up Levi, and that's an opportunity for them to grab this rifle. So he found that second A main player. No one clears door, so Whoa. Energy's picked up two for free. More than happy to have those. Good Cloudburst looking for more, looking for that Astra. No peak though, so going to work with the teammate now instead for the 1v2 to Garden. Sasaka doesn't need that. He's gonna pick up Juju. Jesse walking straight into danger. Gonna near sight now, and Energy has that one from afar. Eight and oh. A Suffolk pick themselves up. Another. Man, Suffolk just heads up plays, man, all around. First, initially, that, that look towards Cat, that look hmm. towards under Archway side, reading them that they'd go towards mid. Then the additional power of the third player over towards the a side two players into a main giving them the advantage for the a site push they just know the reads are fantastic so far and it's because of the fact that trinity valley have been playing pretty standard default doing the same things on certain rounds you just you learn at some point to see some more aggression need to see this utility used in conjunction with one another and that's exactly what the plan is they're gonna see jesse up close and personal and a barrage of ammo strikes the omen. He'll fall early into the round. 5v4 for Trinity Valley. Bomb will be planted. They have the nightfall for the retake for this postman. But now, Malzui, he's going to have that locked in. There's no breach. There's no orbital strike to deal with this. So now, he's going to be about pushing everybody. them off. And that missed like everybody. Too much value. It's going to be tough. I mean, this lockdown's still going to connect. 
I mean, again, now it's a 2v3. Bomb is down, but these defenders are pushing forward. Isasaga goes for the defuse. The reveal is there. CJ in trouble. Now we'll take the peek. Now we'll end up falling. Valzui is gripped for one. Reflex in the now in a 1v2. The Isasaga, he's sticking this one. <laughs> Finds a second kill, but it's traded back. And the trades have been there for the Sharks all, to all the time. Every single time. 16, 2, and 5 is Isasaga. The Sova has been rampant. And right now, 9-0 to zero here. And it just looks like a lack of confidence and just a lack of effort right now for Trinity Valley. They're just getting outplayed at this point. Yeah, that's another example of just some miscommunication. You got to make a decision there if you're going to try to push that lockdown towards the door or if you're going to go ahead and throw that Nightfall or not. Like, Juju's the only one really playing on site. The rest of the team recognize that lockdown's through and takes the space. If they do... Get their fade out in towards A main as well. They have the chance to use that nightfall to get themselves back into sight. But they don't really coordinate that. So not really able to make that happen together. And so the nightfall goes to pretty much nothing because no one can actually help off of it. And right now they're getting pinched yet again. A turret kill is going to come through. Uh, rare we get to see that one. Magui is going to pick up Jesse. Awkward timing. Energy has Magui traded back pretty quickly though. And that's a, a good posturing for this team to get their way out of A main. Unfortunately, they left the spike behind because it has fell energy's there so quick on the flank they have to try to play for it back now drone's going to be there that should give them the info that there's going to be two players if they want to swing and well they don't really want to swing it's a hard fight to win and energy going to take the fight to them waiting for the peak grabs one levi backs up his teammate that's two early kills here and now it's up oh. to cj to deal with the pressure finds that shot but it's all four nothing, ten to zero here, and we are looking at potentially a thirteen to zero unless Trinity Valley can make something out of nothing right now because they are really looking at Secura, find some some frags here on this jet, uh, you know, maybe dashing in, um, looking just to go kind of like a maniac at this point, kind of because it because it comes down to it's ten to zero. You have nothing left to lose at this point. You know, you might as well just dash in and, and at least try to go for a one for one. Because at that point, at least you're getting some value. The thing is they have switched tempo pretty consistently. They switch tempo and they switch location. Do it again. Just this team just knows every time. I mean the chamber now over towards B early. It's gonna break Crowler gonna get out has the information that this team posturing now the execute is going to come through they've got some room to work with they've cleared out the initials can they get farther out towards lane though against all this kj util levi close stairs picked up one reflex will find the market player but it's the stairs still having impact Levi going to pick up two jump down juju mid fall will take down leave gives a whole new meaning to uh to waterfall i suppose is in some space towards the site is flanks on their way yet again they should know about it because there's been consistently a flake through mid but no one looking energy behind one has picked it up reflex from log a second frag on the round gonna need a 4k to win this oh. one and well there's three is, it, uh, is that one of you want in his namesake reflex grabs that kill off the reflexes and he's actually going back towards b he thinks that Alsby may have maybe have rotated. That's the call. And he might end up walking into him. We'll see what happens. 30 seconds. He's committed to this site. Has the divide available. He's off the peak. 20 seconds remaining. For both of these players' tensions at an all-time high. Peak. He's on for a split second there. And now he should know he already crossed. And it looks like the wraparound, the turret's going to give him more info on where this player is. Plant can't go down. Too late. Yeah, and the anyway. plant peak. Yeah, when he got it. How much he can do there. Picks up the Odin. And it's 11 to 0. Right now, it is all the sharks here. We're going to get a replay of how that one all played out. Because again, Canada, they're using all this utility and pushing one another one by one, really. It's, it's not really together. And they have to worry about the flank as well. There's just too much cannon to, to deal with. Yeah, there's just bits of miscommunication. I mean, their look there on the execute is pretty solid. Um, the only thing is just getting a flash that CT player if the jet wants to take the space. So typically, we do see jets taking 1v1s like that. So that that's pretty standard peak. He just isn't able to win it out. Jesse going to find one. Secure's got a quick trade, though. So they've got themselves room towards A main. They've been pretty consistent about throwing that zero point to suppress that omen and find that frag. They've been good about grabbing that pick. The thing is, 
they haven't really been able to get out past that initial pick and it's the same story so they're gonna play it away pretty quick they've read the rotation quite well it's a question of if they can push themselves fast enough because a lot of the time they'll read that there's gonna be that quick rotation from suffolk they'll get themselves into now the weaker site and then they'll wait so long to start their execute that by the time they find they're executing stuff looks like they've cut noise forever they're not here and they've already rotated they've already got to look towards mid market you still gonna come down now energy is gonna be here to step forward out the smoke it's the dash or secure the main entry tool for this line of energy oh, here's a bit no. of noise the spray not close enough to the corner no one closed door all he's get <laughs> nobody closed door either yeah secure did not close it after he dashed in so that's Again, a bit of a miscommunication, a bit of a miscom. You have to make sure your teammates know what's going on as Levi, a bit of long range action with the Tour de Force. He's saga pushing alongside NRG. And it is easy pickings now as the Diffuse will come in 12 to 0 for the Sharks. And they are swimming comfortably here. And right now, they are just feasting on these guppies in Trinity Valley Community College. Right now, it is all in favor of the attacking side at least now for the sharks and i mean you know hey maybe for the content we go five shorty take that up mid maybe a knife fight maybe in mid you know um i don't know kind of any other ideas any other grand ideas you want to talk to me about that you'd love to see here 12 to 0 maybe they play for ot you save for ot here you think um you know no grand ideas but i will say for the folks at home, Suffolk knew they were starting on the defense and played a pretty hard defensive composition. Mm -hmm. They gave themselves a look towards the jet to have some flank potential. Well, they use it pretty wisely. They double sent it up. They've got no flasher into this composition. They're playing for the extra utility, and you saw the invocations of said utility. Trinity ran it down B main and see nothing over towards B main mm -hmm. and knows this one's going A. They got the info very early. A chance to flank. We'll see what it brings them. Looking for a double flank here, but looks like they have a player watching over that. Secure gonna play for a timing inside of the smoke. Jesse grabs one, grabs two, got rid of both flankers. Secure up is able to win his one, but nobody else did. So it's now a 1v4, 22 HP in a dream. You can tuck this one away with extra pillows and blankets. A crispy shot there. Finish this one off. GG's given 13 to 0. All said and done. And well. That's it for this best of three. In and out quickly, Catnator for the Sharks. They were not messing around. Even after all of those changes to the roster, they still have the same modus operandi, and that's just going, killing, fragging, and having a good time. Yeah, Suffolk community runs deep, brother. You see it right there. Able to switch out a roster. I mean, look at their roster sheet. Had a player for every day of the week, and well, all of them having value. So a good look for them. Their icebox comp a little bit uh, non-traditional, but that utility really worked in their favor. That upgraded Rainalier really had a big difference for them, and the ability for them to execute so consistently together out into that A site really controlled the map very early on, and they never dropped the ball from there. On the set, obviously controlled the whole time. They 13-0, they never gave a round away, and that comes off of them playing for a much harder defensive comp. Once again, a comp that's not really standard. We usually are talking about, do we want the kills or do we want the chamber? What do we want to do? We have to play double initiator. They said, no, man, we'll play just one. We'll play just the Sova. That'll be our only initiator. And we'll play instead with two Sentinels. In a long time since we've seen that competition come out, we see how much value it has. Didn't drop a single defensive round. That allows them to just get it done on the offensive. And it's so much easier when Trinity's not able to find the right stack either. They got into sight. And we talked about it before on Icebox. If you've got more utility in terms of the defensive side, it means your post plan's got to be so much stronger because that is the equivalent of playing defense once you get that spike down. So they got the spike down. We are able to set up a pretty strong post plant. We are able to win out the game. So just a team that looked good, looked very coordinated. Trinity Valley kept switching things up. Just the fact that Suffolk constantly quicker to adapt and just looked more coordinated as a roster. Absolutely. Well, we will try and search for an interview and maybe talk about that coordination and those communication. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we will try to find that interview. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup 2022. I am Septilence, joined by Brenda, who is not only a Twitch streamer, but a cancer survivor brought to us by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So, Brenda, of course, if you're comfortable, can you please kind of walk us through what cancer you had and kind of how you battled that over time? Yes, of course. So um, I had I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia (AML). Um, it's a very rare cancer. Um, thankfully, you know, um, treatment for it is pretty good. So 97% uh, chance of it never coming back. I've been um, cancer-free for four years now. Uh, because of this, I am not able to donate blood, uh, which is something I always wanted to do. So I found different ways to help out, and doing charity streams, charity events has helped out a lot. Great, and what a perfect segue. You know, I was going to ask, I feel like there's a very unique bond between cancer and video games. That's not something people would often kind of put hand in hand, but somehow you, you've gone above and beyond to create this connection between the two. And even off the interview, we talked about those charity streams that you've done. So can you walk us through kind of how you use your Twitch channel and your streams to bring awareness and and raise money for these foundations. Yeah, so I use the, the site Filsify. Uh, from there, you can choose any foundation, any um, society to donate money through. You make a campaign, and I like to share it. I like to raise awareness and funds if possible for the Leukemia Informal Society. They have helped my family. They have helped many people in the past, and in the future, they will be. Um, so that's just how I work around it. Yeah, so how do you kind of encourage your viewers to, to donate money? Is it just kind of setting it up and, hey, it's for a good cause, or do you have incentives or kind of fun little activities that encourage people to spend that money? Yeah, so I do a lot of incentives. I work at a pottery shop, so, you know, I do ceramics kind of thing. You sure. know, I'll pay you something. They can do, choose what kind of games I want to, I, they want me to play, things for me to sing, you know, all kinds of things. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we talked a little bit off the interview about kind of being trapped inside, right, and having video games as that outlet and, and utilization of kind of feeling a little bit less stuck. And were there any games you found yourself kind of really attracted to or games you found yourself just playing more and more often as time went on? At first, it was a lot of Gary's Mod, Prop Hunt. That was the thing back in the day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I also play a lot of multiplayer games, League of Legends, party games, yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. So if somebody kind of looked at your situation from an outside perspective and they thought, oh, you know, how could somebody ever utilize video games to, to address something as serious as cancer? How do you feel you've been able to successfully utilize this unique platform? I, it's amazing, you know, you get through Twitch especially and the other streaming apps, you get access to meet people all over the world, Yeah. Um, people globally. So you get to raise awareness globally. You get to teach people about blood cancers, about what you can, they can do to help people. So it's just an amazing way to spread the cause. Absolutely. Well, Brenda, just one more quick question. Well, less of a question, but more of an opportunity for you to kind of let us know where, where can we find you when you're raising all of this money and doing great things on stream? Of course. You guys can find me over at twitch.tv slash balloonsbunny. Um, I am a VTuber, so I don't show my face often. It's mostly my model. This is an exclusive. <laughs> yes. Brenda's face. Yes. <laughs> Well, Brenda, thank you so much for sharing your story, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, I really think that there's been a sorely missed opportunity for developers to take a step back from competition and take a step forward with community. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if they do that, I think we all win because community, I would argue, is the one thing that no one's trying to solve. Mm -hmm. We're trying to solve recruitment. We're trying to solve competition. Tell me where's community. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Any one of you, go ahead, shout out what's the national community for Scholastic right now. Any title, tell me. Yeah. Where do I go? How do I meet and hang out? Of the storm. How does you community zero? There's yeah. nothing. It, it yeah. doesn't exist anymore. And it doesn't exist statewide. It doesn't exist school wide. It doesn't exist region wide. It doesn't exist nationally. It doesn't exist digitally on Twitch. It doesn't exist digitally on Discord. It doesn't exist through any form of skill based development. It doesn't exist on any form of, you know, uh, skill-based learning or just pure socialization and fandom. Mm -hmm. 
huge missed opportunity. You want to take their time and make it more efficient, in my opinion. Uh, tell Riot Scholastic politely to stop what they're doing with competitive and their integration with LCS should be, you know, uh, Twitch, you know, symposiums and summits and conversations and learning and uh, all sorts of wonderful things and promoting camps and educational learning activities and RSSA sponsored curriculum. That will move the needle. I don't see any of that. So Chris, that was that was pretty much the last topic. You you kind of wrapped it in a nice package called community. And I was kind of thinking more from an organizer and a broadcaster point of view around growing fandom. And how do we get fandom around collegiate esports to look more like traditional sports across the board? And um, you know, that helps us go out and sell sponsorships in the place of which trickles down to all our member schools that we represent. But when we go to brands and we can't check that box of, you know, a billion impressions and a million views, um, we still are challenged with selling those sponsorships. So my last and final is, do we have any secrets around how to grow fandom? or grow community on, let's just start with on campus. I mean, I got the bed one real quick. Okay. Best way to grow community food nights has nothing to do with playing the game. I'll give you a real life example. We used to do dollar burger night at the university of Cincinnati. We would just go out to bar Louie. We used to have bar dollar burgers every Wednesday. We'd post in, in at this time, those Facebook groups, tell people where to show up. Six people, 12 people showed up the first week. By the third month, we had 40 plus people coming. And it was the biggest revenue night of the week for Bar Louie every week, purely because of us. But we had friendships. We had Welcome back, everybody, to the Esports U Network. We just wrapped up week one of the NG. C double A E matchup here. We got a quick 2 0 in Suffolk. Well, they took it to town, and well, we've taken one of their players for a quick little interview. Joining us here on the desk is none other than the Jet of the Hour. It's Energy. What is going on? Uh, nothing much. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Um, do you have you have any questions for me? Anything you want to know specifically? Oh. Or, or oh, I, I've got some questions for you. All right, let's I've hear got it. some questions for you, Energy, to, to kick us all off here now. We got a whole different roster going into Ascent. So we got you for the second map. Uh, I'll let Camel talk about the roster specifics, but I'll talk to you about the map in specific. So when we got our composition, we got to see double Sentinels come out, a solo initiator, and that was a Sova rather than like, what is that? Traditionally, that double initiator, that fade KO. Is that because of yesterday's patch and those initiator changes? So we, yes, it, it kind of, partially. So most of the time when we ran Ascent, we would run something similar to Sky or KO, um, and but we would still run a Sova. We haven't gotten accustomed to the Fade just yet. Okay. It's, we're looking at it, you know. Uh, we're sure. still a developing team. This is just the start of the semester. A lot of new players on our team. So figuring mm -hmm. out the team comp and how everybody wants to play everything is just like figuring out, working it out. But we went with the Sova just because we wanted everyone to be comfortable. And that's what is a saga, the fucking MVP, the greatest of all time. Love him, man. That's what he was comfortable on. So we put him on that, and uh, that's how it worked out. And thank God we did. Valid. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned it, developing roster. I mean, we were looking at the pregame. Why are there so many people on this roster? There's like 15 people <laughs> on this roster. Right. Tell me about how people are selected. What's the process? Are people just coming in and out? Right. What, what, tell me about it. So um, it's actually, it's really funny. So our coach... Uh, our coach really wants everyone to get a chance. Now, not everybody that tried out for our team got a chance. Crazy. But um, we wanted enough so that if players couldn't make it, uh, there's always enough players to come back. And for different right. leagues, apart from this one, we have other teams that are more set in stone, more concrete. We have enough subs and everything. But I think the most important part is that everyone really gets along with each other, which for a group of that many people is absolutely Crazy. shocking. But it worked out pretty well, and our team comms are pretty comfortable. And, uh, you know, it turned out quite, you know, it w worked out pretty well. Smooth 13, 13-0. What was the other one? 13-5? 13-5. 13-5. 13-5. 13-5. 
something? Yeah, uh, thirteen two wasn't even that close. Thirteen two oh, wasn't wow. even that close. Yeah, I give it too much credit now. All right, no, no, so no. energy. I'm listening. Energy. I'm here. The flank, man. Oh. Constantly, whether it be top cat, whether it be the back of B lobby, somebody is pinching this team. How is that possible? Is that the IGL call? Are you guys just too big brain? Talk to me about it. So you got to think of the game as kind of like a lot. Most of it's just map control, right? So if the Mm -hmm. enemy team is pushing B, they're leaving A open. So we got to take what we can get, take that control and use it whenever we're trying to take more space. So pinching them from every angle possible, especially when we have the jet to smoke off the trips, if the chamber dies off early, makes it really easy to get all angles covered, all sides that we can, so we have the biggest advantage possible when we're retaking a site or preventing them from taking back the site. Those flanks were so important because the enemy team really had nowhere to go. Remember that round where me and Asaga uh, closed on them on cat? There were a bunch of people in A lobby. They didn't have anyone anywhere else, I think. And um, it made it really difficult for them to go anywhere because there were some A lobby, some A main, and uh, we were just closing in on them. So it pinches them. It puts a lot of stress on them. And it's really important that maybe not every round we did it. We, I will say we did it maybe a little more than we needed to that game. But it's very important to make sure that you're taking control of the map when it's being given up to you. Absolutely. I said it better myself. One final question for you, Energy, from me. It's simple, not as complex, not as creative as cat nears questions but definitely will put you in you know a bit of a, a bit of a interesting decision here favorite vandal favorite phantom skin i need to hear oh for myself it's, my. it's it's a it's a hotly contested debate me and cat mm. are talking about this all the time i need to know what is it all right so my favorite phantom skin i don't use phantom as much as i used to but the purple ruination the purple and gold that one got to be some of my top tiers I got to say, that one, the little ghosty sound effect, it's really nice. Um, as for the Vandal, it depends how I'm feeling, to be honest with you. It's much, much more fluctuates. I used the Golden Forsaken Vandal for a while, but the new Chrono Void one, man, that one hits. It really does. I'm a big fan of that. We that actually cool. played a match against another team five minutes after that collection dropped, and it was incredible. We performed so well with that. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Secret Sauce. Secret Sauce, the new skins. <laughs> Speaking of secret sauce, said it's a saga. Cold on the sova, Oof. comfortable, making the difference. You already gave a shout out in that direction. Any yeah. other shout outs? The school, the rest of the team. What's up? Oh, of course, of course. So, uh, the school, Suffolk County community, everyone there really cares. You know, everyone there really appreciates every work, every piece of effort that is put into the team, especially by our coach who's coaching a lot of different teams right now and is still coming through to make sure that he shows up for as many of them as he can and give us that uh, enthusiasm that we need to really pull through. Um, I got to say, in terms of players, uh, uh, Nar, you saw Nar on map one on Icebox on Killjoy. Nar is an absolutely amazing player. He's great at IGLing. He has the experience, and I think he's really important to the team overall. Uh, I also, Jesse, Jesse, who was on Omen and uh, Chamber on Icebox. Uh, absolutely great player. You didn't see his absolute peak today, but I promise you that one day you will, and you're going to be absolutely shocked at what you find because Jesse is Jesse's up and coming, trust. But so am I. So whole team is really something to look forward to. But uh, yeah, it's really just the effort of everyone combined. I love that. Everyone combined. All 15 of you, if oh, you yeah. will. Mm. Fantastic showing this week. Best of luck moving forward. And you know, Hey, maybe take it easy next week. You know, like you, you can win like a little, a little closer score line. You know what I mean? Like, uh, regardless, a dominant fashion win for Suffolk, a fantastic game and a fantastic interview. Thank you so much for your time, energy, and best of luck moving forward. Thank you for having me on. It was great talking to you. Camel. That made it. Camel, that. That rawness, that energy, it's easy to understand where the 13 0 came from. Absolutely. I mean, they clearly, communication is down. They're all working together as a team. I'm surprised that they actually work as well as they do with all of those, yeah. players, all of those spots, you know, being taken and fought for. It's incredible that they're able to remain uh, you know, in high spirits and they're able to win these games so convincingly. 
congratulations to Suffolk College. Well, that does it for us here at the booth and on the stream. Catinator, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you to Colton and Lemon in the back for helping us with production. And everyone else here at Esports U, we say thank you and good night. Have a great rest of your evening. here with some Valorant to kick things off for week number one of course with esports you it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit in the preseason so we're gonna be rocking with that week number one seven weeks for these teams to go ahead and show us what they got before we hit the playoffs and before we go crazy and watch teams really show us what they got my name is orbital with me is Laird Laird how are you doing today oh dude I'm incredibly excited uh, this is one of the first Valorant events I've ever gotten to commentate, so it is my absolute pleasure to be on the mic for you guys here on the Esports U2 Twitch page. Now tonight we have ourselves about a good old-fashioned Russell here in the Esports U preseason. It's going to be St. Clair College going up against Lackawanna uh, against each other, and you know what? This is going to be a fun one, I think. The map picks are already in, and uh, pretty standard except for a certain stage pick in there. A certain one that I was told by you specifically that you are very upset that it's coming in here. I love that fact so much, and, and, <laughs> I, and I definitely understand, right? We are taking a look at Bind, Breeze, and Ascent. Those are the three maps that we'll be playing through here, of course, in a best of three. We may only get to see two, 
but we will see Breeze, right? A map that yes. some people really do dislike, and that's understandable. Now, as of note, for the next two weeks, we will not see Fracture. No, this is not because teams have said that only one side is the most dominant. It is because there were currently changes going through, and as teams do adjust, it has been deemed necessary to say, don't worry about it, everyone gets a free ban on that map. But of course, that's not what we're talking about. Bind, Breeze, and Ascent, and I mean... Breeze is the one that you said specifically was a certain agent's not so fun map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I happen to, to be a bit of a breach main myself, so whenever I see Breeze, <laughs> I start to shudder a little bit. But mm. I will say, very excited to see the Saints go at it. Uh, Saints are a very, very dominating program across the board in all of their esports events. I'm interested to see what Lackawanna could do to stack up against competition. Now, a couple days ago, there have been a couple of changes made to certain characters. Obviously, uh, for the side of Lackawanna, we can see that uh, Brick has locked in the Sky, whose Flash has been adjusted very recently. And uh, actually, the Saints, uh, Darren, going to be rocking one as well. So this will be an interesting uh, couple of matches, to say the least. Yeah, it'll be the testing grounds as well, right? This is week number one. As much as we uh, like to give the teams credit that they come into the season very, very well prepped, it's still trying to work through some of those nitty-gritty moments, some of those moments where, hey, we're still trying to figure out our identity, maybe still trying to f uh, lock in the rosters, you know, and everything of the sort. So week number one is a testing ground, and we also tend to see a lot of those uh, sometimes mismatched matchups, right? Some teams coming out of the gate really, really strong, and they tend to have uh, the spotlight shown on them a little bit more. Now, if we see that here, that'll be very, very fun to see, and that gives us a nice glimpse into the future. But, of course, you want to see this lovely, lovely bind map, but it will be St. Clair to go ahead and be on the attacking side to kick things off and give us the proper management of how this map should be played. Absolutely. So, you know, this is a very... Uh fun map you obviously have a bit of a rift thrown in with those teleporters on either side of b uh, which are very very fun to work around and it makes it rotations a lot easier so if you leave one site unguarded for just a moment you got to be aware of that other team to hop on those teleporters and get rotated before you can even blink yeah and i mean this is also one of those maps that we'd love to see the agent variety right you were mentioning it a little bit earlier and uh i we didn't touch on it just yet and i kind of i kind of forced us away from that so i would like to go back to that once we do get to see the agents once again but it is quite standard right the chambers are still coming out i think for a lot of these teams they do prefer that along the side the fade has of course been moving forward a bit more and saying clear obviously picking that one up but you take a look for the side of lackawanna and it's a bit more of the uh the old glory days right the old glory days of all these agents you know the sky coming back in coupled with that viper and then the rays right behind it so it is going to be a little bit more kind of the homegrown style of we played this maybe a couple patches ago so let's keep doing it yes so uh you will see a very very long name uh representing i believe uh, that's bozy so if you see fasd <laughs> uh the chamber for the side of Lackawanna. That's Bozy, that's is. who we're gonna be talking about. Just so we're not confusing <laughs> people a little bit later on. Uh, I, I do know someone had opted to call them face roll, but right now there is no face roll here. Boar is able to find Mystic Nyx very early on, and it'll be a first frag out coupled with the paint shell. So very nice use of that utility. Around the corner, someone goes, but Globe is able to find Endeavor. Not endeavoring through that death, but Globe Molly. is now kind of stuck into a little bit of a corner here in showers. So. Gonna be dancing around that complication. St. Clair, they'll get a very, very quick plant. And now it's gonna be a retake defense. Borge going ahead and getting around the corner and saying, hey, I found a ever so lying in wait brick. And that puts it into a 3v4. St. Clair coming out with some heat. Gub able to find one. Joy Boy finds JRC. And Darren finds Joy Boy with Borge cleaning it up. It's a 3k. It all starts from that initial pick. The moment that uh, we saw the lock into corner with the UTEL coming in from the Rays onto the opposing team's Rays. Uh, it seemed like from there, Lackawanna was at a bit of a disadvantage. You know, the, whenever the numbers disadvantage goes in one person's way on this map, it is so easy for a five stack to just jump on a point before the other team can recoil and recover. So uh, right now, very, very strong play from the Saints and they are gonna be resetting, getting ready this. And this will be their buy round. We have one Stinger and four Spectres that's gonna be filling out their lineup. Yep, the anti-eco feels so good for St. Clair, who not only gets plant money, but the round win. And that means this is going to be a full save from the side of Lackawanna. Endeavor, of course, did hear someone walking, knew they were there, and said, your head is mine. 
Lozy said, I'm I'm sorry. I, I made a mistake. I will not do that again. And yep, so and eyesight, completely open. <laughs> I was going to say, Aesight, nobody there, no one in heaven, nobody in lamps. And it seems like uh, Lackawanna is completely unawares of this. They're not even rotating just yet. Uh, so they're probably playing for a bit of a retake right here. And yep, you can see them on the map start to scramble a little bit. They're all heading to teleporter. So uh, one person in showers is going to have a big responsibility. Well, and it's also the fact that you had to kind of take that 50-50, right? You had to take a choice of, you know, we only have pistols. We can only do so much. And because of that, in goes the molly, in goes all the util, and it is completely locking down Gub in this corner. But you did your job. As Gub, you slowed everyone inside of that showers. They're not going to get into the site. It's going to be that chance to pick up a couple extra fags and pad that KDA. Forge goes ahead and sprays too. And Dever and Darren follow suit. And JRC says, hey, Gub, you only got assist there. I'm sorry. I love the poise from Gub, though. Waiting in the corner, despite all the Utah coming through, despite the Viper smoke, despite the uh, little room bot that you got coming in from the Rays, as well as his own team's Rays uh, dropping the grenades, too. And just stood there, took that damage, and said, I am not sacrificing my position for any reason here. I feel very comfortable <laughs> that you're going to be coming right through this hole. And then the second he had a teammate there, they just swung that, pushed super hard. And, you know, some... Very good util from them, and they're going to be going on to a 2 0 lead. Yeah, and this is, uh, again, quite the standard for Valorant, right? After that anti eco, we are seeing the bonus round come out here. And Lackawanna, they have the guns, right? They have the guns here, they have all the rifles in the world. The question is, how many kills can they get? Because the rounds have, no matter what, even from the pistol, felt fairly St. Clair favored. So, right now for St. Clair, if they're able to lock down this third round, if they're able to overcome the okay. weapon difference, it could lead to a little bit of disparity. A St. Clair would not only not have to buy up any major weapons, but they would also force uh, force Lackawanna into a rougher situation, into that econ ping pong scenario. So Endeavor saying, hey, this is an opportunity for us, and we're going to take it quite slow. No early aggression, just playing it smart. Yeah, covering so many angles, waiting just for a pick. And I think the second the Saints find a single kill, they are going to definitely jump in and take a sight. They have two waiting on long right now. There is a dog oh. coming in to distract a little bit. Bor Borge on the flank. Such one. a good flank. Gets one. Is now going to look for another, but can't find it. But Brick now says, give me that chance. It is going to be a two for two trade overall. I mean, it gives so much over, I feel. The uh, globe is going to find Endeavor's life. So Lackawanna not shy of taking those fights. JRC, though, in position. Looks like the plant's going to come through on B, so they are going to hold down here. St. Clair. Need to be aware of where these movements are going, and Lackawanna need to be aware of their corners as well. Check every angle, check every corner, because if you don't, you might get caught sleeping. Yep, these brim smokes are proving to be a big challenge for Lackawanna right now. They're all standing in the middle of it, waiting for an opportunity to push. All right, yep, yep, caught the wrong oh. swing there. It's one. And got some damage down as well, so JRC is going to try and sprint in, is going to try and open up an opportunity for themselves, but... It does not happen. Bozy is able to find it. Gub, though, off on the angle, said, hey, I can jiggle, I can wait. That is going to be the Vandal picked up. And you get one, so Bozy is the last one alive. Oh, you get the hold. You know you have to take a swing. It's 30 HP, and it's going to be a model that slowed it down. No spike defuse for you, Gub, with a 3K and a clutch up. Gub seems to be the uh, stalwart bastion there for the St. Clair team. Has not dropped a single life yet. Uh, still rocking a 4-0, and that's, you know, an infinity kill factor at this point. And, I mean, you can't even hate Lackawanna for trying, right? They they did everything right, but just not as quickly as we might have liked to see, right? The fact that they waited in the smoke for so long, the fact that they uh, gave enough time for St. Clair to actually rotate and get in a position and JRC to... Act Actually get that as well as drop um, Bozy down a, bit, a little bit further in the HP department. Shows that they're still kind of going through the movement. So right now, it does feel like um, it does feel like like one are going to have to try and work their magic a little bit faster if they want to remain competitive. 3-0 so far at St. Clair. Now going to bounce onto B. Sight Ray's taking a little bit of a bounce and a hop. Forge says, hey, I hear another boom bot rolling around. Let's go ahead and destroy that one real quick. And it's Lackawanna trying their best to enter into the site. It's another quick plant from St. Clair as they're continuously on the aggressive side brick. Coming around the corner, gets a point blank. No chance to get a second as JRC and Borge clear out the rest. It is four in a row sweep as that is the cleanup that they like. St. Clair 4-0 so far here in map one.
They cover each other so darn well, Orbital. I mean, the second they get one single pick, they jump on that point. They leap onto it. They get the plant down, and they force a lot of pressure very quickly onto this Lackawanna team. You know, Lackawanna, they've been doing a good job of sticking together, but that actually works to their detriment because sometimes they uh, cover one angle and then are very susceptible to flanks from the Saints team. Not just that, I want, I want to highlight something else, right? We do see a decent kill spread on the side of Lackawanna. They seem to be spread out fairly nicely, but the, the problem is, of course, the lack of kills, right? That is always the downside. The top fragger for St. Clair currently has seven. That is all the kills uh, combined on Lackawanna's side. So, again, right now, St. Clair feeling very, very strong. Orbital Strike comes in, but Borg says, hey, Mystic, I caught you. Globe said that might have worked a little bit to slow you down and give an opportunity. So, one for one so far, as again, Gub just says, listen, you can throw down anything you want, but it does not matter. All we care about is planting, running back, and waiting for you to come to us. Plant is down right now. Lackawanna trying to find angles and trying to find their way back in. We got three coming in from Showers. There is an ult coming in. Yep, it's going to get two Whoa. for Globe. Low gets two, and that is nasty, and that might have opened up the opportunity. Gob, once again, is the solo member. Can you defuse? Uh, that molly did not work as well as you wanted, and you have to dance this Devil's Tango. Couple shots go out, halfway point is reached, and that's going to be the kill. Vozy says, hey, give it over to me. One round won by the side of Lackawanna. One round that is sorely needed as well. All it took, that round was decided by that one little whiff there from Gub. Gub uh, obviously had that molly down figured out, but unfortunately just was a little shy to the right side of that spike and allowed for the uh, defuse pressure to force him to go for a peek. And from there, Globe had it all figured out. It was all over. And excellent plays there from the Lackawanna team. Way to readjust, and they're going to be going in with a win. Got some momentum here. Not just that, though. It, it did feel like a lot of ultimates were expended. Both orbital strikes were taken off the table, and it's right down just a straight gun. Except, of course, for one Viper's Pit, which could mean all the difference if they just so decide. Right now, though, the Viper's all the way on B, and A looks to be the aggressive default start. Showers is going to grab two. Or at least hold on to two members, and Globe said, hey, you can't peek that way. Globe turning up the heat a little bit here as St. Clair realized that they might have made a mistake. Globe was covering showers during that too, and then just swung, got a nice peek on main. Uh, so right now, there is still two hanging out in showers. Fade and Sensor in the uh, chamber covering each other's back. Right now, they're pushing out. No smokes. Darren trying to cover those angles too, helping out. Oh, again, they're hiding up against the wall, but Joy Boy finds Endeavor, and JRC says, hey, give me a chance. Can't get two, though. Down to a 2v2, Bozy. And hey, I may have a lot of letters in my lane, but that doesn't mean that I got to type it all out. It's going to be a swing. Darren gets one. Joy Boy able to turn it back. But guess who's walking around the corner? A perfect yep. opportunity. The flank was a gorgeous. Gub by the book. Again, the clutch up master. That's what I'm saying about this Lackawanna defense. They are very, very susceptible to these flanks. And every single time I've seen a flank work, it was because they were too hyper-focused in one direction. That's generally how these flanks are going to be going. So, you know, good on St. Clair for recognizing that, you know, they have these angles. So, the, the Lamps fl flank from right here. Gub is going to secure his team victory. And that is 5-1 to one in favor of the Saints team. I mean, I think you hit the nail right on the head, right? This is, you know, the tunnel vision, uh, uh, the tunnel visioning that can come through sometimes in these games is very detrimental. You always have to have your head on a swivel. You have to understand that the angles are there. The angles are there for a reason. These maps are designed to have multiple entry points, right? And you have to be careful of that. Right now, St. Clair chasing their sixth round here in the seventh overall. They opened it up with the first blood. Endeavor here on B Long was able to find one near the teleporter corner. And that means Lackawanna are actually giving I'm over a lot of pressure. One down. up in Hookah. Joy Boy might go ahead and see it. Tries to get the spray down, but Borge says, nah, I got your head first. B side completely open, and that's going to draw the rest of the team. Yep. They're going to come over like bats out of hell. And here comes the plant from Sky. Is that one down? Globe hanging out in his own smoke right now. Some of those new flashes try. coming oh. in. <laughs> A little bit of a paint shell goes out too, but oh! Oh! Collateral! Oh, Bozy! He got two for the price of one, and it looked good, but I mean, it just wasn't enough. There's the only two kills so far on St. Clair, whereas St. Clair have fired back with four. It looks so good. That was a highlight moment.
But right now, Globe's got to do the impossible. Pistol only against three, and you can see those line of sights lighten up Globe like a Christmas tree with a collateral to finish off two members. St. Clair go, thank gosh it was only two. I will say, I think that the chamber ult did its work there. And it looks flashy, <laughs> but, you know, you gotta, gotta have a little bit more longevity when it comes to using that thing. The longer that you stick around is a lot of pressure for the opposing team. And uh, we, we see that Endeavor has one in their back pocket right now, but they're also rocking the Phantom, so they're, they're probably gonna save that until uh, they end up dying again. Yeah, they're gonna go ahead, hang on to that one, and just, you know, not go too crazy, unless for St. Clair, they do decide to kind of break out kind of that star moment here. But they're pretty happy with the aggressive pushes, and I feel that the 2 out of force is mostly utilized for the early detail. Uh, pressure outs, but we do hear again. In comes the Orbital Strike to clear out one of the sides, and it gives an opportunity for Borch to pick up two. They completely lock down this A site, and again, these spike plants always coming within 30 seconds of the round starting. St. Clair are trying to waste no time on this side. The pressure from multiple angles as well coming in from this St. Clair offense is absolutely insane. I mean, you have that haunt coming in at a weird angle. It's definitely going to catch somebody out in the open. And on top of that, you have the the orbital strike coming in, uh, which is also forcing people to route from their entrenched positions. Oh, that's another that's off that's going to be used. And Endeavor goes ahead and swings with Globe. I'm going to clean up house. Globe, who has sometimes looked immaculate on nine bullets. I mean, you're gonna try your best, but you can't do too much. It was a little bit of a rough scenario, and it should be two surviving. So right now, St. Clair carrying over seven, and I think you called it out, right? The site control and the willingness to drop such large utility for what could be a potential kill, right? That's the second time I believe we've seen a Gub drop the overall strike, not to defend against a spike retake. It's just specifically to clear out the corner. They're like, hey, we want to clear out uh, back right. Right? Go ahead, drop it. We'll flush in on the left. It's just manipulation of the site over and over again has shown that St. Clair know what they need to do. They practice this over and over again, and they are not letting up. Right now, for Lackawanna, they're the ones that do have to kind of question where they're going to be. They have three ultimates in their name, Showstopper, Viper's Pit, as well as their own Orbital Strike. So they do have the utility to fight back. They do, they do, and I, I did see that uh, Endeavor, or excuse me, not, not Endeavor, um, I forget, Bozy uh, ended up popping his own ult. There's going to be a shot through the smoke, and, and Endeavor's going to frag out Globe behind the scenes there. Ooh. That paint shell was so good and actually caught Endeavor, so Mystic Nyx, being the Mystic, knowing exactly where they're all going to stack up, saying clear. And I say, hey, we're going to get revenge for our chamber's death. You better be ready for this. In comes a little bit of a boost attack. Spray number one. Borge isn't able to find more than that. But Darren is there to back it up. Down to a 1v3. And I mean, Joy Boy not so happy right now. He's going to take a swing while blinded. And Darren says thank you very much. Eight rounds right now. And I believe about four in a row for St. Clair as they are cruising and hoping to hit that double digit rounds. You were talking about the util usage coming in from St. Clair, and you were like, you know, sometimes you gotta splurge in those situations, but it's really not splurging if you're winning every round, getting that extra bit of, <laughs> yeah. of money from earning kills as well as, uh, you know, winning rounds. And on top of that, ults aren't hard to come by when you're getting kills either. So it's really not splurging, it's just good offense. <laughs> I love the way that's it, right? It's just like, listen, if I'm always winning, it's not really splurging because I'm gonna be doing this again and again. What you talking about, right? I love that point out, and right now Mystic Nyx is trying to splurge though with their own ulti. Opened up the showstopper, tried to fire it off, but Borge was able to dodge out properly, so that's another ulti down. And this Viper's Pit, right, for Lackawanna, it feels like it's been up for the last four rounds in counting. It feels like they've had this ultimate, they've been sitting on this Viper's ultimate for so long and haven't been able to utilize it. And that worries me, because Viper's Pit is one of the largest encapsulating ultimates that can create a barrier of, uh, of nullif like just nullifying the aggression that St. Clair wants, right? You go ahead, drop it. They don't want to go to that site anymore. So the fact that Lackawanna are saying we can fight without it, maybe they need to go back to the drawing board, right? Use that ultimate, try and get it off cooldown, and, and be able to give yourself a larger opportunity. But as it stands right now, Lackawanna have done that without so, right? Got the first blood, looking to do a bit more. I will say, though... Uh, you know, as you called out, yeah, they do have that first blood, but it's really stifled the offensive department from St. Clair. 
ordinarily they plant within 30 seconds, but right now they're doing a good job of just taking this really slow, uh, you know, trying to play for picks of their own. But I will say um, Lakawana is doing a good job of just not giving anything up. There's an ult coming in from JRC. Yeah, they're going to try and catch a couple corners. The tethers are going out, so they know at least some appropriate spots behind the lamp, inside of them, and around the back corner of a site. I mean, you know where they are. You force them away. So now it is a Lakawana that have to figure out their own deviation. It is going to be Lantern that holds at least one or two more. But boards JRC take two for the price of one. JRC is dead. 3v3. Couple shots through the smoke. As Boards is trying to boost away. The Seekers going out are going to cause some problems. And around the corner to go. Brick said, hey, you gave yourself away. And now, even with the util out, you don't get too much. A little spray to the side. And Mystic with a nasty slide. Catches them sleeping. And Gub can't readjust. Lackawanna in high noon position are now with two rounds and feeling a bit better about how this half could have gone. Those aggressive pushes with the satchels are a big deal, and Mystic Nix perfectly recognized that where they were, it was a really good time to swing against Globe, who, uh, or excuse me, against Gub, who showed some rare signs of cracking. That was only their second death this entire match. And I feel like the key to the victory for Lackawanna is getting rid of Gub. Obviously, that maintains uh, a semblance of being consistent amongst these rounds. Two rounds, one for Lackawanna, only you two deaths play, for Gub. And I feel that's true at the same time. It's you don't want Gub to be alive during clutch situations, right? Because Borg is having a frag out game. 15 so far. Ridiculous KDA. But I mean, Gub is the one that you're just like, if Gub is still alive when we're trying to go for the defuse. I don't like her odds, and that, I think, is what uh, is such a huge point that you pointed out, right? Gub has been a rock-solid uh, status during those uh, post-plant defenses. So right now, it is St. Clair taking these a little bit slower, and as you said, keeping themselves uh, properly spaced out, especially with Lackawanna dropping that Viper's Pit inside a Hookah, cutting off that mid-rotation. And, and that's one of the favorite the ones. That's one of the favorite ones from St. Clair, too. So it was an excellent play. Ain't no one pushing through there. It seems like a lot of the teams are converging upon long, but those smokes from Globe have been really beneficial because there is a Chamber alt who is looking like they want to get some kills. And you see Endeavor posted up there. There comes the Seekers. Well, yep. It's going to hold steady as Bozy goes ahead, grabs one, Borge. They got locked down here. Spike goes in, but how dangerous is this really going to be? Bozy might have found an angle, but straight through the smoke, giving away the position. It's going to be dangerous. Lackawanna. Figure out what they want to do. And now the spray. Gub finds one. Endeavor finds another. But Mystic Nix in the middle of that gets Gub. Darren fires away. Finds Globe's head. It's down to a 2v3. The Poison Pit is still up, but Joy Boy can't really come out. Says, I don't want to take this chance. But because of that, it's a one-man swing. Darren takes out Brick. And the Viper is all alone. The Snake is taken down as Darren pieces together a 3k. Sometimes you don't even need to walk into the Viper pit to take her out. Sometimes whenever you get that plant, she has to come out and say hi herself. So, excellent plays there from the St. Clair offense yet again. And, you know, these slower pushes, they aren't really the St. Clair style, but... Uh, the necessity of them really means that Lackawanna figured out how to play defense pretty well in these later rounds. And right now, as we get down to the last uh, last round of the half, we got to look at reality right now because St. Clair are looking like an absolutely indomitable team here on the attacking side, right? In times, we see them lose a couple of members, and at times, we see them get a little bit over-aggressive, but they always figure out how to rein it in when they need to, right? Hey. Listen, we're getting a bit too antsy. Let's go ahead and slow things down. Hey, we pushed too far this time. Don't try that swing when you don't have the rest of the team. They make adjustments on the fly, and it makes them look so versatile. Right now, they are flushing in to this A site once again, but it is a bait. Using that teleporter, going to try and bring everyone around through mid and just past the chamber. So they get past Scott Free and draw in a potential fight. In they go. Darren going to go ahead, get Mystic Nick. JRC comes around the corner, gets Joy Boy, and Globe falls just as quickly. Bozy with that tour de force is going to try and find something. But I mean, you're one player of two looking down the barrels of five. 
That was a really, really strong rotation there from this St. Clair offense. Uh, oh, and yep, that's going to be an orbital strike. Will it take him out? It will. And there's the flawless coming in, courtesy of Gub on that util. But again, I got to talk about how good that rotation was. They pushed up super far, recognized they weren't being contested on A main, got into lamps, and then said, you know what? We've been here for a minute. I recognize that the rotation is probably coming in from B. Let's hop into that teleporter while they're mid rotation because they're going to be stuck in the back site. And then we're going to be able to converge onto the back site, get a bunch of angles covered. And, you know, they got three straight during the plant. And it was just really difficult for this Lackawanna team from there. But this is going to be a bit of a changing of the guard. They're going to have St. Clair on the defensive side of things now. Lackawanna is going to be dictating the tempo of the match from here on out. And. I want to highlight even uh, more so into that fact is St. Clair up till that last round had yet to actually pull a rotate off, right? All of their attacks have been pretty standard, right? Hey, A side is the one that we're going to go for. And that's all they did. They were very headstrong. That rotation was what really kicked things off. Borge, though, said, hey, give me a chance and I'll get that paint child kill. It's immediately rebuttaled with two more kills on the other side. So, so far here in the pistol, it is 3v3. Oh, but here's Gub on this flank. Looking at Joy Boy, gets him one. Oh, not able to get a second one though. Globe knocking out Gub. It is a 2v2 again. However, this Lackawanna offense a little bit worse for wear. They don't realize though that A site is completely uncontested for them right now. And that's the mind games, right? They're so scared of what could happen, what could be Holy around smokes. that corner. Globe though is going to try and lock down a little bit of vision denial. Gonna go ahead and rush down that three, actually, that we see there. And they do get the plan, so this will be a spike plan planet. for uh, Lackawanna. They're going to happily get that one down. But will they do more so? Darren sending out a little bit of a trailblazer, peeking around the corners. No information, so clear on site, but Endeavor has to find him. Full HP. Do you get it? Where's the headshot? Oh. oh, Globe is found and Globe is dead. Can you find one more up along the box? And you do, but Bozy is going to get one. Darren is able to finish it off, and it is the pistol to St. Clair. Yeah, so during that gun round, or pistol round rather, a lot of good trades coming in uh, from both teams. However, neither team was able to have a definitive advantage right till the, until right till the very end. Uh, so, excellent plays all around, really good side out there from this St. Clair offense, or excuse me, St. Clair defense. I'm just so used to saying it at this point, man. <laughs> the attackers and defenders, offense, defense, terrorists versus counter terrorists. I mean, so many games use so many different acronyms, but it all means the same thing. One team is pushing, That's a good and one team is, uh, you know, trying to push back in the most relative sense. And you can see it here, right? Interestingly enough, because of that plan, it gives Lakawana a chance to actually buy out as well. So if they're actually going to buy up, they're going to try and lay in with these uh, SMGs. And they understand that this is one of their best chances. And Borge, realizing that they might have bit off a bit more than they can chew inside a B short, they say, okay, not the spot we want to be in. And they are going through hookah. So eyes are open. Lackawanna with guns out are challenging St. Clair here from game point. Yep, and there is that paint shell coming in. Borge going to take up residence within hookah. Has the angle pretty well covered. Very entrenched. Bozy, he's going to peek through right there. Yep, gonna crouch right underneath the rest of the shots from Borge. Ooh, such a great pick, and I mean, this challenge with the weapons might be their Hail Mary that they've been hoping for. They've been able to burn a little bit more util out of St. Clair, so if they do want to push, they could find an opportunity. Three putting up a short now. They're gonna get more. Gonna spray out JRC, realizing that they're caught out, but in goes the smoke, and they're gonna have to fight this blind. 40 seconds left. Do they make it through this smoke right away? Yes, they do. They chase through. It is going to be safe. But you got to check. You got to check. Yep. And you don't check. JRC picks up a free kill. Around the corner goes the blind. And JRC able to swing a second. What a beauty of a combo play. The Sky and Fade making it happen. A jump up and a peek. Realizes a like one are back in the corner. But Bozy able to swing on JRC. The blind comes out again. And Darren chases. Gub able to find break. And it's down to one member alive. It looks so good. But Mystic Nix cannot do it. Darren secures the 12th round. For St. Clair College. Especially towards the later end of this match, Orbital, Darren has been really, really good. I mean, look at that. 17-4 with 11 assists. And most of those were actually just favorable trades. Picking up stuff off of their own blinds. Picking up stuff um, off of some of their own teammates' demise. Getting one or two at a time. I mean, it's been really, really useful for the St. Clair uh, team. Especially on defense as well. 
uh, and they stood tall both times to win rounds. I mean, at this point, it was a Hail Mary, so they're doing it once again. Lackawanna buying up the SMGs. Stingers and Spectres. I mean, you're hoping for a miracle here. Light armor is all you have, and I mean, the util that you bought up as well is not going to be as strong, right? Globe working with two out of three. So, I mean, this is going to be that scary, scary chance. Endeavor. Endeavor. Oh, got to cover that angle. Oh, Endeavor. Endeavor's waiting. Gotcha. Okay, they did get All right. Yeah, we're, we're good. We knew what was coming. We were like, please, please check the corner, and they did. They did. It's like when you're watching Jaws, man. You're just like, oh my god, is the shark going to get him, you know? But not, not that that time. They had a bigger boat. Uh, they had a bigger boat, and then Darren said, no, 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 no. I'm bringing in the freighter. Let me take two. Let me take three. Three K, and then some. Darren, chase for the ace. Boys doesn't let it happen, but you did enough. A three K plus some change. I mean, this is a 13-2 game. Covering over for St. Clair as they move to 1-0 on the set score. The precision there from St. Clair. It was absolutely methodical. Only dropping two individual rounds there. Excellent, excellent plays from them on both sides of the spike on offense and on defense. But uh, I will say, I, I feel like, you know, Lackawanna, they, they did a good job of matching tempo in, in those two rounds that they won. The second they figured out, okay, we got a pick here. We're going to play this at our pace. They did just fine, but whenever St. Clair had tempo, it was anything but a cakewalk. Yeah, this is... I wanted to see teams be able to come out with some fire, and I knew, you know, no matter what, in a game or in a series, there has to be some winners and some losers, right? And right now, St. Clair's are saying, we are going to be that. We want to show off that we know what we're doing. We want to be that big dog at the top that you have to watch out for. They're making a great claim for it right now, but we'll see in game number two if they can continue to do this on a much more open map of Breeze. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. As Gub, you slowed everyone inside of that showers. They're not going to get into the site. It's going to be that chance to pick up a couple extra fags and pad that KDA. Forge goes ahead and sprays too. Endeavor and Darren follow suit. And JRC says, hey, Gub, though. Off on the angle said, hey, I can tickle, I can wait. That is going to be the Vandal picked up. And you get one. Supposedly he is the last one alive. Oh, you get the hold. You know you have to take a swing. It's 30 HP. And it's going to be a model to slow it down. No spike. The fuse. And they're continuously on the aggressive side. Brick coming around the corner. Gets a point blank. No chance to get a second as JRC and Borge clear. And hey, I may have a lot of letters in my lane, but that doesn't mean that I got to type it all out. It's going to be a swing. Darren gets one. Joy might able to turn it back. But guess who's walking around the corner? A perfect yep. opportunity. Some of those new flashes try. coming oh. in. A little bit of a page hell goes out too, but oh! Oh! Collateral! Ready for this thing comes a little bit of a boost. Pack spray number one. Borge isn't able to find more than that, but Darren is there to back it up. Down to a 1v3, and I mean, Joy Boy not so happy right now. He's gonna take a swing while he is dead. 3v3, couple shots through the smoke. As Borge is trying to boost away, the Seekers going out are gonna cause some problems. But around the corner to go, Brick said, hey, you gave yourself away. And now, even with the util out, you don't get too much. A little spray to the side, and missing with a nasty slide. You actually pull a rotate off, right? All of their attacks have been pretty standard, right? Hey, A side is the one that we're gonna go for. Right away, yes they do, they chase through. And it's gonna be safe. But you gotta check, you gotta check. Yep. And you don't check, JRC picks up a free kill. Around the corner goes the blind, and JRC able to swing a second. What a beauty. I'm gonna get him, you know, but not, not that that time. They had a bigger boat. Uh, they had a bigger boat, and then Darren said, no, 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 no. I'm bringing in the freighter. Let me take two. Let me take three. Three K, and then some. Darren, chase for the ace. Forge doesn't let it happen. First, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, so my name is Caitlin. I'm a part of Farmingdale State College's eSports club. I am captain of the Valorant Green team. I am a second a second semester sophomore at Farmingdale State College, and I'm 19 years old. Okay, do you like Farmingdale so far? Yeah, it's, a, it's really great. Uh, the program I'm in is very specialized, and it's not offered um, that often in the East Coast, so it's pretty nice. I enjoy it. And what's your major? My major is aerospace professional pilot degree. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Thank you. So is this your first time on an eSports team? No. So I've been a part of 
the Valorant team for two semesters, and this is um, my third semester, and it's my first time ever being a captain. Okay, oh, that's awesome. Can you tell me a little bit about what it's like being a captain? So a lot of times I'm organizing the team, making sure everyone is properly set for upcoming games, um, getting scrims for our, our team, and kind of just making sure everyone is there, present, and possible, and able to play the games that we're going to, you know, be participating in. We're participating in two leagues this semester, so it's kind of hectic. Oh, gosh, yeah, definitely. I can see that. How is it different for you as a player versus as a captain? Do you feel a lot of responsibility? I basically have the responsibility of choosing who, you know, really plays, what uh, type of characters everyone's playing and what positions and roles we are all doing, as well as um, being there not only as a team member, but also being seen as in a leadership role and having that sort of respect there and being able to delegate um, everyone's role in the team. So it's definitely a lot uh, more different, and my voice is most definitely heard, so <laughs> I, I like it. I like being a, uh, a captain. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, what games do you play, or what is your main game? I know you mentioned Valorant. Right, so um, I play Valorant, but um, I started off with Counter-Strike, and I really always have been interested in FPSs, so um, it, that background has always been there. So my transfer onto Valorant was pretty pretty easy. That's cool. What have you done to improve yourself in game over time? So one thing um, for my teams, especially, I have open communication where we're able to really give our constructive criticism without taking offense. And me as a captain, especially being uh, it being my first semester, I find it really important that everyone is able to come to me and communicate like, hey, Kate, I don't know um, how I feel about doing this or uh, I want my voice to be heard about this specific thing. And um, just basically taking into consideration everyone's voice and having that open line of communication is really helpful. And that's something I find really important. Okay. Do you carry that strategy into your everyday life as well, would you say? Yeah. Um, communication is really important to me, um, especially in aviation with crew members. You're always trying to communicate properly and efficiently to get the assigned goal completed. And that works in video games as well as in aviation. So... Um, I feel like it transfers very well, and I put my 100% effort in everything. And we are back, ready to go for game number two. As St. Clair are looking quite dominant right now from the get-go, have seen so strong in their micro-mechanics, in their aim, in their trigger control, in their aim, um, recoil control, and then in the macro. There's almost nothing that they cannot do, so Lackawanna right now on Breeze are going to have to try and step it up and give us a good show. A match where aim is going to be a lot more important because uh, Breeze is a big map. You're going to be expecting a lot of opping, especially if there's going to be some mid-pushing. And it's really, really easy to catch yourself out in the open on this map. And for Lackawanna, covering there's, those angles is going to be much more difficult because there's so much space to cover. So uh, hanging out behind walls is going to be your best friend on a map like this one. I also think it leans into a little bit of an issue that we saw Lackawanna actually have as well, right? You had pointed it out about, I want to say midway through the game, and I think it was very, very important, right? They had they had a lot of these opportunities laid out to them, and they knew what was coming, but they tend to tunnel vision a little bit. They tended to focus a little bit too hard on certain angles and weren't really keeping their head on a swivel. So hopefully we get to see some of these agents that are coming out bring a bit more um, opportunity, right? Bringing their POV to a little bit larger extent, and that might help them out. Of course, we do love to see that Sova coming out here. I am a huge fan of Sova. I love the long range uh, opening. But I do see one that is causing a bit of a stir here. The Neo uh -oh. for me is what I'm seeing. And then, of course, seeing on the very bottom, it is going to be that Breach coming out. I mean, Joy Boy rocking it. But you just said that Breach is not really that great on this oh, map, th right? This is, this is Breach's worst map without question. But <laughs> may maybe Joy Boy's figured out something that I haven't yet. And I'm very <laughs> interested to see what that is. And, you know, we're going to have the opportunity to do so. In just a minute, I see Bozy uh, still sticking with that chamber as well as Endeavor. Uh, Borge going off the Rays as into the jet. Gup going to be on the... Uh, they haven't locked in yet, but it looks like they're going to be opting for the Viper as opposed to the Brimstone. And I think Brimstone is actually not too horrible on this map. A lot of people say if you pick Viper, you're throwing as well as, you know, the Breach. So maybe maybe we'll even things out a little bit here. Oh my gosh. It's Gub. It's Gub. I'm not worried. Yeah. It's Gub. <laughs> yeah, this is, again... 
Gub, the clutch master, is the best way to put it, right? Multiple rounds, we did see St. Clair get a little bit over eager and ended up putting themselves into Rust and Arrows, and Gub is the main reason why they went 3-0 at the beginning, right? Stalling out that bonus round, able to clutch it up with those, um, with a couple of those mollies at the beginning. So now with the Viper, also a possibility, and a lot more, I want to say, tactical positioning, right? The lineups here on Breeze, very, very open, very, very, um, relentless in where you can fire those uh those snake things and all that stuff so i'm very excited to see what they can break out here i'm also very excited to see neon of all things in comparison to the viper we are not going to see anything i don't think the teams are going to be able to see halfway across the map yeah yeah you know what putting as much uh you know stuff to hide behind on a map like this as you can really not a horrible idea i can definitely see the neon pick uh working out here in a big way because you can really only see Neon if you're directly ahead of them. And that is exactly where you do not want to be if there's a Neon running at you. <laughs> not just that, I also realized we have an Astra coming out as well. So it's not I was, only... <laughs> I was waiting for you to talk about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got the Cosmic Divide coming out here. We got, like, all the walls. It's going to be cut into a pie. We're going to see A-Site just sliced into six. And everyone's going to take a corner and, like, good luck, Rumble Royale, right? It's going to be hilarious. And I hope we get one of those moments. But right now, we do have the suppression to kick things off, and as we talked about, Lackawanna going to be on that attacking side first, and they have opted to actually go B, so quite surprising here, saying, hey, B is going to be our option, B is going to give us the most optimal formation, using a little bit of that runway, Globe is going to walk their way up, try and get the plane down, Mystic is able to find Forge off that pistol round, and is going to look for just a few more, right now it's a little bit of a dance, and Song JRC though finds Joy Boy, and the hunt is on, this Viper's Wall is up, but it's only going to do so much. Plant is down. This is St. Uh, Clair for a bit more. JRC just walks through, bold as everything, and Gub follows up as well. No chance for Bobby to be able to help out. It's going to be the pistol to St. Clair. Really bold peek there from Gub, uh, because Gub was at one-shot range, and legitimately if Mystic just hit him a single time anywhere on the body, even the legs... That was that was a dead Gub, and it would have been a little bit easier for you to defend that site. However, Gub will not be denied, and that is going to be St. Clair going up one. And I was talking about all the line of sights you got to cover on this map. We see uh, initially three marshals get locked in, uh, but now they're going to be opting for two and three specters. Yeah, just, uh, you know what? Do what you can. Do what you can and have a little bit of a blast. So, <laughs> so uh... Right you know what? We'll, we'll see how it plays out. But right now, I mean, this is St. Clair. I don't doubt that the Marshals are going to do um, do enough damage. We saw what a no, uh, a no scope could have done, which was amazing. I loved it. Right. Uh, but that was on the side of Lackawanna, right? I want to see what these other squads can do. What St. Clair can do around the corner in Endeavor. Say, like, give me that chance. A couple more snaps. Good body shots. Looking for one more. Gets two other bodies. No drops, though. As you can see, the Neon and the Breach absolutely insane. Yep, they are bleeding right now. Oh, and yep, there is the uh, Util coming in. Gonna kill two is Gub. And now going around back is Mystic looking for a frag. Not gonna get it. Borge with a nice little shot there. And yep, going around the backside as well. Uh, only losing Endeavor. And, and St. Clair are gonna keep a lot of their guns and their money. But Endeavor's gonna have to probably buy again. But hey, no skin off his nose. He is currently chilling at 4,000. Yeah, that is, uh, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Okay, okay. You bought up a little bit. You brought your Util back. But, again, this is as we did expect, right? St. Clair, the team that is coming out, they're on fire. They're rolling through a lot of these fights. And it feels good, right, for this squad. And and you're locking down a composition that is also fairly aggressive, right? With the Neon, with the Sova, with the Screech, they are pressing forward in their own right. And they're doing it again, right? There is no stopping Lackawanna from trying to push the tempo just as fast as they clear did in game number one. And it works this time. Mystic able to find Gub, who is hopping around the backside of A going, I don't know what's going on. First flight goes down. Globe is going to get the plant. And now they have to defend. Darren able to snipe away. Joy Boy is going to be hoping for a bit more. But Darren, with the weapon in hand, is going to lose their life. Globe and Mystic Nyx are going to grab one apiece. It's down to a 4v2. Not a good Ooh. start on this bonus round, but Borge is starting to claw this one back a little bit with some really good usage of the Jet Util. As well as Marshall picks up a Spectre, still not going to be enough, and it is merely one man standing. JRC on site has to deal with three of his competitors with a planted spike, and yep, not going to do it. Ozzy going to pick that one up to secure the win. 
for Lackawanna, and this is a much earlier first win than they got during uh, the fine set. If I'm recalling, it was four rounds in a row before Lackawanna okay. were able to steal one back. So getting one in the third feels very, very good, and this is much more the, I want to say standard, right, that we see. Again, the first three rounds are almost, almost always predetermined, just because of how the econ tends to balance right out. Round four is where I say Valorant really kicks off, right? We see the weapons in hand for everyone. We see everyone kind of going off on their own, and we get to see these teams actually give us a great show. And right now, Borge once again, this off is going to give it air best shot, but being blind and being locked out means that they have to chase away. Oh my god. <laughs> they, they, they survived the wall of pain there. There were neon stuns. There was a breach stun. They just dashed right back, and they only have an off. So if you get up right in their face, it's going to be really difficult for you, but the blind's going to come off this pyramid in just a moment. Right now, St. Clair looking for an opportunity to get in, and yep, Endeavor's gonna pick that one up. Oh, blinded as Borge right in the nick of time to survive the off. The fact that that wasn't to the body is crazy to me. And right now, St. Clair are gonna go ahead and look for the defuse, but in goes a little bit of a sonar dart, really, really smartly done. But Borge gets a blind shot through the through the wall, and that leads an opportunity for the rest of the team to clean up. That is, of course, the round. That leads it to St. Clair to move to three and one. Even though the bonus did go the way of Lackawanna, it feels like St. Clair are starting to get a read on the aggressive pushes. Uh, Lackawanna, they're getting rest, right? These crazy fast pushes, you get the plant, yes, but the post-plant defense, maybe not as strong as they were hoping. Something I kind of want to talk about is like right at the end of the round, Borge just had a pile of bodies to loot. Like they, they came into the round with an op, and then there was a Phantom there courtesy of Mystic, and then there was also a Vandal there courtesy of Joy Boy. So at any given moment, they could just switch between the three uh, best weapons in the game. Mm. Always having the opportunities available to you, but right now, Gub throwing down that Viper's Pit. This is the... I want to say standard lockout on Breeze. You go ahead and just throw down that virus pit. You hold him steady and oh, Borge. Borge trying to hold it down on A. That's the second time you actually miss an opening off shot that could give the team a lot of opportunity. Mystic Nix throwing out that bolt here is going to try and chase forward with the ulti and look for a kill, but it's getting completely honed out and you are able to zone him down. Now Mystic Nix is going to get a kill and reset Endeavor to find Joy Boy and Endeavor falls to the head hunter, but JRC says, give me a little bit of fun One here. JRC enemy. getting a bit more on top. It is down to a 1v2, though, as Globe and Friend are going to try and win it out. JRC with 6 HP. It's not a score that you like to see on your health bar. Yep, finally going to get that plant down. Brick has the recon drone out. Globe's going to get the plant. Oh. JRC gets one hit, and that is a thrifty kill, courtesy of Globe with the classic. So well done, and again, that Neon ulti giving space. Mystic Nyx, this is what feels like the map for a Neon to play on, right? So much freedom with the wall and, and very fast movements here. St. Clair, maybe not a little bit aware of it. Now again, still very much in the lead. Still feeling very, very strong here. And I don't think they're going to give up, obviously, just yet. There's no reason to. Yes, they're bumped into the Econ. But yeah, the blade storm, right? Keep eyes on that blade storm on a forge if it is open up. And it is. They're gonna try and use it as kind of the balancing act for their team. Yep, Mystic gonna try to come through. It is suppressed for a little bit. Gonna get rid of Borge. Mystic trying to work around right now too. There is a box there. Yep, doesn't even need it there. Ozzy's gonna get a pick on Darren. Globe gonna take one on Endeavor. JRC gonna hit Joy Boy through the wall. I'm out of here. Shocking. And Mystic looking. just patrolling oh. center. <laughs> Uh, Mystic actually found someone who was like, I want to chase. I don't care what happens. I want to chase. Gets the kill. And this is what we expected, right? In a save round, I mean, St. Clair don't really have any opportunity to do anything. What you're looking for is just one or two extra kills. Got one. Got another. Nope, you're spotted. 7 HP. How are you not dead? I, I don't understand. There it is. Well, <laughs> not going to be alive for very long there. Or, yeah. you know. That was the finish. That was the finish that you're hoping for. You carry four over, and this is one of the more convincing rounds that Lackawanna has really had but I want to be even more convinced now going into this tied three to three setup St. Clair are going to buy up full armor full weapons and everything let's see what Lackawanna can do let's see if they can show us that they deserve to fight for this map as well keep an eye on that ult economy from Lackawanna as well they currently have three ults compared to the two coming in from SCC 
and there is um, the, the wall that's going to get put up, the the, uh, the, the divide. And then you have the reach alt as well as the chamber alt. So if you want to go for that big time op, uh, probably not going to be seeing it just yet because we do see an op on hand uh, for Bozy. But keep that in mind. It's going to be something we might see later. Ooh. I mean, we're talking about ult right here. Well, Endeavor said, I got one too. I know how to use it. Is he able to lock out a single member? Now hoping for a bit more, saying, uh, Borge, this is how you snipe, by the way. Take notes. Globe walking through the mid, and the rest of the team hiding out along this B-side wing. Seems like that first kill really did the doozy on him, so Lakawana saying we're going to try and split up. We're going to try and look for a different angle. We're going to be happy about it as well. How long will they take to get on the site, though, is the big question. Yeah, they are a bit rattled, so they're going to be taking this a little bit slow, and they are at a numbers disadvantage. They do have three alts that they could pop at the moment, uh, but I think they're a little bit scared of the potential of running into that chamber. Now, there is going to be some Viper Util making this uh, push into B main a little bit more difficult. 30 seconds left. Even with it being difficult, 30 seconds is called out, so they go ahead and chase two split along that mid doors, and the others are going to split through the south. They say we are going to make it work. Mystic Nyx finds one. Gub able to find another. But Globe evens it out. And Endeavor says, give me those two to four kills. That's three. Darren able to pick up on the back end. And it's a round win. Off of the two to four, you go ahead and close out that fourth round for yourself. And say for all the work that you did, you still come out at a loss. Lackawanna did so well. And yet a single ult, you turn the tides. One burst kill is all it takes to activate Darren. The second Darren smells blood, uh, you know, I was I was using a, a Jaws metaphor a little bit earlier, but again, for Darren, it just kind of works. They have had a bit of a quiet round uh, this time, but I will say that they are so good at closing out games, especially when they have a teammate to work with. They really do, and that's something that uh, I feel is sometimes quite hard to really showcase when it comes to uh, FPS games, right? In Overwatch, I feel like it's quite easy because everything's synergized together, right? It's the wombo combos and everything, but in round-based FPS, it's much harder. So to be able to uh, clearly identify that, hey, these two people are working as a tandem team and they can really show it off, I think brings immense, immense understanding and respect from a lot of the players out there. That's really, really fun to see. Right now, we are seeing St. Clair also look for a little bit of an opening. Was able to pick up first blood. Traded out a bit of extra damage on their side. But with Globe already on the side, is going to lay down the play. No, they tried. Oh, my lord, they tried. Brick was able to find Darren's life. But Gub immediately answered back and said, no plan for you here today. Brick on their own, though. It's going to get the swing. The transfer is too oh, real. But and Endeavor third. shuts it down. You know what? Brick, we see you. We respect you. And you can die with honor there. Man, just really good position to be held. But... Uh, back to the drawing board for Lackawanna. They popped all their alts there, except for Globe, Celestial Divide. So, uh, you know, they, they, they used the Breach alt, didn't catch anyone in it. And uh, also, I don't think they got a single hit, did Brick on the Sova ult. But still, very a, a lot more of a competitive game, too, than we have seen from game one. That bind was a little bit uh, one-sided. And the, uh, this, one's, this one's been a whole fight so far. It's been uh, heavily back and forth, just these teams not really wanting to give up anything. And, and I think you are correct, right? We're seeing a much different Lackawanna come out here. They're not lacking anything here. They are just playing their aggressive style and saying, if we want to win, we have to play up. And it's off the back of Mystic Nyx. This Neon is feeling so empowered to chase, to go for those 1v1s. And it's leading to results. The 50-50 of the first blood is giving them a moment's opportunity. Here comes that Celestial Divide. It's going to come in, uh, you know, make these flanks a little bit more difficult to attain. A nice Molly to actually block off the trail. Some people caught behind the wall right now. St. Clair doesn't want to push this just yet. Oh. You really don't, but JRC was able to find one off the far end. And... Being able to open up that chance, but they fall as well. Bozy finds two huge, huge frags. And St. Clair now stuck into this pit. They're saying, hey, what can we actually do? Where are we going to find those kills? Brick getting lit up around the corner. And Bozy swings for a third. Darren is able to find Brick's life, but you're down to 27 HP. You, you got to try this, right? You, you don't really have too much, or you just try and save and say, let me get some of those frags. There's one. Find one more. 
You're gonna get it. You're gonna go for that defuse, but I mean, there there isn't much you can do here, right? The stun goes out. Darren just hoping for that chance. You're gonna run as fast as you can. You're not gonna outrun. Oh. That's like it is dead. And like a wanna are at four rounds, keeping pace with St. Clair. That is a net loss. Joy Boy still without a kill, but with five assists, definitely making their presence known, especially on that slam there to make it a little bit more difficult for Darren to run. If Darren didn't get hit by that, there's a good chance they got out of there and were able to maintain their util, but instead they're going to have to buy and they're going to be rocking light shields going into this one. Ooh. Saying that you want to use a light shield, well, at least only one, right? There's only really one there, so it's, it's somewhat negligible. Right now, though, St. Clair saying, hey, let's go ahead and throw down that virus fit. It usually is on B, but this time it's almost a full stack on the B side. You can see what St. Clair were hoping to do. And with that call and with the shots going out, they're going to rotate oh. three, two members over. Split, though. Eyes on that mini-map, Lackawanna. Saying we want to try this, but it's a duel. Darren able to find Joy Boy, but guess who's still alive? Mystic Nix with that ulti is going to fall. That's a huge grab from before. That might be enough. Gub finding one of their own, and that poison is still up. What a turnabout for St. Clair. Yeah, you know, we saw uh, Joy Boy and Mystic try to run up the middle. Um, instead, they did just peeked right back into that A side, despite the fact that they knew it was walled up. They, they had a good opportunity to possibly take B by surprise. Uh, and go for a bit of a switch push, but instead, you know, they, they, they're going to fall right into the trap that was laid by St. Clair. St. Clair right now just holding their angles. It is a 4v3, and the three are trying to go mid at the moment. You only got one op shot, and you don't even get that brick. He's going to lay out that operator and say, not a chance. We're going to give ourselves that chance to move in, and Borge, we know what Borge can do. Gets the dash prepped. He's going to look to swing and try and make a moment to happen. So it looks the play up and finds a sleepy globe. What a tag right there. JRC is also going to find Bozy. So it's down to one player alive with only 13 seconds left to plant. I mean, Brick, you're kind of stuck. Break. I'm sorry, buddy. You don't have too much. And Gub said you don't even get the satisfaction of living the round. Now, Gub absolutely put a stopper to that A push. It looked like a full stack and then like you know possibly a split coming in mid, but that Viper's pit really made it difficult for any of Lackawanna to push up there. So it will be a 6-4 to four lead in favor of St. Clair. Uh, but, you know, right now, again, still a much more competitive game than Bind was. Oh, man. Oh, this is uh, getting spicy again. St. Clair feeling okay, kind of leading themselves to that halfway point that they're very happy about. The most that we can see is two more rounds, and especially with a save round coming out from Lackawanna. You're going to try and do your best, but Endeavor, losing out to the Sheriff. That one's going to hurt a little bit more than they would probably care to realize. Ozzy, walking around with that headhunter saying, hey, give me a chance. Just give me a single chance. Come on, give me, give me a chance to knock someone down. But keep in mind, there's no armor. If he actually goes to heaven... Uh, he will be finding a little bit of a prize with there waiting for him. That operator that was left by uh, St. Clair. However, though, he has Darren who's covering him. And, yep, going to walk right into that one. Had no armor to his name. Does not get the single headhunter shot. Um, however, Darren's going to be working the way around. Covering center with all of their Util that they could possibly muster. Going to walk in right past the incendiary. Oh. Low, but trying to keep things in their own pace, and Borge is able to find Brick. Down goes a plant, and Joy Boy with a great headshot. Globe to find one more, and it's down to 1v2. Are they going to win this 50? They've done it once before. JRC, going to have to work your magic. Okay, Loba slow, but took a shot, now going to be blinded. Able to spray down a one. Joy Boy is going to fall. JRC, can you land a shot? You got the panel in hand. Globe waiting around the corner. And you are spawning yep. low with a 4K with a thrifty round victory. We'll move like a one out of five. The absolute poise from Globe has been completely holding down this team. You know, say what you will about the kill count right now. Mystic is a little bit ahead, but still, the use of this util, the patience, you know, the tempo control that Astro can bring to the table has been very useful and a very understated factor in this Lackawanna offense. I am absolutely enjoying what I'm seeing here from the side of Lackawanna. They've shown so much strength, and I mean, even getting to this point, we saw what map number one did. 
they look so much better. They feel so much more at home. And I mean, what can we do here? Borge is able to get one, but look at this flank again. They catch him sleeping. Mystic Nix, enjoy, boy. Get some joy out of those kills. Brick laying down the Hunter series, just calling out for an extra fight. And it's a 3v4. This is St. Clair wondering what the heck just happened. Joy Boy's gotten two kills in the last two rounds, which is more than they've had the rest of the game put together. And, you know, those kills, again, they're not understated. Whenever you get a kill from Joy Boy, it comes at the best possible moment. And that frag is right at the moment to start this round. It's given them a lot of momentum going forward. Darren trying to get some KO suppresses. Endeavor and Globe are going to trade, but that's a huge pickup from Darren. Yes, it is. If you can get this out, it will be great. But look at that. The Colat plus a little bit of util spray. Bozy picks off a 3k at the very end. And now we get a swap sides. It is now St. Clair's turn to be on the aggressive side. And I mean, listen, I know Lackawanna did fantastic work in that first half. They were able to move it to a ground zero, right? We are now back to square one. But we know what St. Clair does when they get to choose where the fights happen. Exactly. You know, their, their hard pushes are really, really palpable at any given moment. However, Lackawanna feels a lot more comfortable on this Breeze map, you know? And I, I kind of uh, disrespected Breeze a little bit, but hey, a volatile pick like this can definitely turn the tides in favor of one team or another if they're comfortable playing here. And it definitely seems like Lackawanna likes the stage quite a lot. I do like how you also pointed out about uh, Breach, and unfortunately the Breach is currently sitting at 2 and 10, so definitely within that realm of... I don't want to say I called it. Yeah. I do want to say I jinxed it. Yeah, well, it's it's also a question because we want to see them be able to step up, right? On the defensive side, you are going to need a little bit of that util to help out because right now, it is it is like a Wanda that came out with the main advantage. 3v5 right now. Great crossfire pickups with those pistols. But now they got to chase in, right? Couple shots go out. Brick is going to lay into that door. That's a huge flood of teammates. 1-2-2. One, two, two, and they are moving like a, an experienced cleanup crew. Gub, last one alive, is going to fall. And Lackawanna, clean up that pistol with four still alive. You know, Nyx is really good on those initial pushes. Obviously, having a Neon on a map like this is really good for dictating the tempo and also cutting off uh, sight lines from their opponents. However, on cleanup, whenever it's a 4v1, the amount of pressure that Neon can apply to you in that cleanup department is so devastating for any team. And for the first time this entire set, Lackawanna is going to go up to a one-round lead. I'm... Ooh, this is going to be very, very interesting, right? Because, again, if we see this happen, this is a chance for other teams out there to also say, hey, Breeze, we really have to get into rotation, right? This is a much larger implication than some people might think, and, and maybe I'm overthinking it, but the idea, right, that, hey, there is an obvious weak map that this team does not practice that we can, you know, if we get mildly experienced at it, you can abuse a little bit, right? You force an opponent to play on this map, and you're like, dang, well, we actually get to work on it. So there are things to think about that can give away a lot of information to opponents that this might not be the best. So I want to see St. Clair show off that they can still fight for every round. And again, this is early on in the second half. This is kind of the standard, but Borge able to pick up a Spectre of their own. And it's down to a 3v3. So just as Lackawanna have been throwing around those 30 rounds, it might be St. Clair's turn to do the same. Oh, JRC right around the corner has a Spectre of their own as well. Globe's gonna go up now. On top, yep, nice, nice play with the team. Okay. There is just Gub, who is an absolute stalwart. And there is also Borge, who has been an offensive weapon for the St. Clair team. They are vulnerable right now, but no one's gonna peek around this corner. It's gonna be a bit of a defuse from Globe. Excellent trade. Are they just gonna stick it? Yeah, they are. Oh. No, but they're not gonna do it. And the thrifty win comes in for St. Clair just in the nick of time. There was probably point, some kind of fraction of a second on that defuse. You, you gotta, you gotta give props, right? Pros don't fake is the term used over and over again. <laughs> and I mean, that was it, right? That was. That was a chance, and, and you give a huge amount of props. You know, you had to go for it, right? Didn't really have a choice. Had to go for it. Tried to almost reach out. And, I mean, if St. Clair peaked just half a second late, as you called it, it would have been over. 
So far, though, grabbing back that second round lands uh, Lackawanna into a little bit of a rough spot, right? We see a couple friends. We see a single stinger that is going to come out as our only main firepower. It's not much. It's not a whole lot. But you're going to pray that it's going to be enough to battle what St. Clair are going to be laying down. In goes the Owl Drone. Just trying to spot out a bit of information. And Brick also launching multiple rounds of Shock Bolts in. But Endeavor says, I mean, Bozy, you can't, you can't do too much. Gub, of course, laying down that very quick plant as Brick finds Endeavor's life. And now a Vandal or a Phantom into the hands of LC. It's a really clean skin. However, very early for this Viper's Pit to be coming in. Nick's going to try to stick their way through it. However, Decay has set in. They do have a lot of damage on them. He's going to recover that in a little bit. Lobe and... Next, Joy Boy trying to push through as well. Brick gets one. Darren, though, like I said, in the right moments, Darren can get these kills that really matter. And uh, it's going to be him, Borgia, JRC to stick that one out after the plant. And that's what I'm saying. These fast pushes from St. Clair have been incredibly strong on Bind. It seems like they're going to remain as strong on Reeves. Yeah. I mean, let's hope so. Let's hope they can keep this up. We get the guns coming out, though. Big guns coming to play, and JRC is like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Give me that chance, and I'll take it away. But you also love to see the fact that um, that St. Clair are currently rocking with some nasty wallets as well, right? 3 to 4K between a majority share of them. I mean, they're, they're looking ready for this, right? They are looking so, so ready. It's going to be on the side of uh, Lackawanna to see if they can make a big opportunity happen and a big opening for themselves to take the lead once again. They've taken lead once here in this game and that's all that they are hoping to do once again endeavor never looking throws down a rendezvous says okay okay i have a save point to go to when do i want to use it oh Swing yep. out around and darren able to help out endeavor opening up an opportunity and darren is able to grab another mystic nix though finds endeavor who missed the first shots and i gonna call out this a site Bozy, what can you do Oh, and I think they were trying to catch uh, the rotation over to B. However, uh, no one on A moved. So there is going to be Bozy. Gets the flank. Gets one. Not oh. able to hit Gub. And the defensive stalwart that is Gub is going to remain undeterred. Gets that plant for his team finally. And it is just Mystic Nyx with a 1v3 situation to contest. Oh, and that one hurts, right? That is, that is the first time that we've seen kind of like an outright mistake on the defensive side right just a hard spray missing every shot and it makes it feel kind of bad especially in this high pressure situation that could have been the make or break deal and i mean you coming around the corner mystic nick's gonna get absolutely annihilated as darren takes away a 4k of their own nine to seven is the current round score and saint Clair have nullified the amount of econ that Lackawanna were hoping to have we can see a little bit of a budget buy coming out for multiple members couple specters couple armors and I mean, they're even saying it, right? We don't have enough to fully buy up. Let's play it a little bit safe. Yep, you gotta play the long game right now, which is so difficult to do against St. Clair. The thing about St. Clair is that whenever they have tempo, it is so hard to take this horse off out of the track, but they keep running, they keep making it very difficult. There is a three stack on B site, which looks like that's where it's gonna go. Multiple bits of util gonna actually slow the pace here a little bit. Definitely gonna slow down. I mean, the uh, no command is one of uh, one of my personal favorites because listen, I, I I come from CS:GO. I just like shoot things and you win. Not all these abilities are coming out here, so I like the no command. I like locking that one down, and we are seeing it coming to play in full force. Look at that, just an angle on the side, Darren. I mean, you saw the arm and you took the swing. Beauty of a shot. Globe though, what? Hold on, one. what? I mean, sometimes you find the head. And they're going to grab a phantom. Are they going to try to play for picks here? Or are they going to try to push? They're going to be blinded for a second, so pushing might not be an amazing idea. They get oh. another pick. Hang on, there's the recon. Okay. Seems like both teams from St. Clair fading back a little bit. Peaks right. Nope, not going to be able to get Borge, but despite the fact that Globe went down, they were able to take quite a lot of that St. Clair team down with them, which is going to make it a little bit easier in the econ department for the rest of his team. Uh, Laird... Have you ever yeah. heard of the Harlem Globetrotters? Uh, yes, I have heard of the Glo Harlem Globetrotters. Where are you going with I this? I mean, the, the trick shots that were coming out of Globe right there were a little bit insane. I'm <laughs> That was 
a very scary round. I understand they lost. I get it. I get it. But it was terrifying. Headshot after headshot after headshot. We are seeing this Lackawanna squad have moments of brilliance, right? That if they can tether into a standardized, uh, kind of the, uh, make it the norm for them to be able to pull it off, they could be a team to fear, and it's something that I am very oh. much excited to potentially see. Right now, Bozy getting forced out of that corner, and I mean, they were hoping to see it. But, of course, St. Clair get the plane down. All five are up, and it'll be 5v5 on the retake. Yep, Boar is really trying to bait out the uh, shots coming in from the chamber alt. However, Bozy remaining undeterred. Okay, there's the ult from Mystic. Mystic gonna get one, gonna get Ooh. two. Goes through the smoke, looking for more, not gonna get it. There is the wall that's gonna be a little bit of a throw. However, it is only Mystic against three competitors from the St. Clair team, and they are all aiming at that wall. They know exactly where Mystic <laughs> was to come from. And Mystic now gonna retreat back into caves, gonna slow up a little bit. There is not a lot of time left on that wall or the bomb. Gonna get one oh. pick and they're gonna fade away. <laughs> Just in the win, baby. 11 to 7 in favor of St. Clair. Oh, that was, uh. That was cheeky. And, and again, Mystic Nyx has honestly hit that radar of a very aggressive duelist that we really like to watch, right? And again, this is week number one. I'm loving the fact that after a game one like they just had, Lackawanna are showing a phenomenal set of skills here. Their uh, duelists are coming up online. Their util is being used effectively. And you can see it here, right, in the kill score. Of the top four, it's a kill spread of five. That is the only difference that they have. Joy Boy, yes, we give you a pass. We said it was going to be hard to play Breach. <laughs> and I mean, you at so least you did got it five, anyway. right? I have, yeah. I have so much respect for you. Yeah, it's like, listen, if you're going to go down the rocky path, you might hurt yourself. Listen, it's a risk I'm willing to take, and you did it. Respect, sir. Whether you make it to the bottom of the mountain in one piece or not, that's a whole separate story. We're on to what could be a 12th round win. But right now, Lackawanna, with weapons in hand, are going to try and make that not happen for St. Clair. Yes, and, and I will say at the start of that last uh, round, I was so excited to see what Bozy was going to be able to do on top of that right pyramid. However, Ooh. that was not able to come to fruition. A lot of these flashes onto Bozy have been super pivotal, but speaking of being pivotal, the offensive push coming Speed in from the defense of Mystic Nyx. Yeah, they're, they're willing to push up. They know they grabbed two off that rip, and they can do so much more. A couple pulses go out. JRC is stunned up, and... I don't know if they actually got much more information than that. And now a little bit of a recon in the back as well. JRC saying, hey, I think someone's right around this corner. And Bozy said, yeah, I am. Glow able to find JRC. And now the pinch of Darren is able nice. to grab one or two. But my gosh, four left alive as Alaka wanna say, bring it on once again. Eight rounds to their name. That was a really fun one to watch. Absolutely. Again, whenever there's that numbers advantage, I won't say that St. Clair crumbles, but it definitely gets a lot more difficult for them. Is Bozy going to hop up on top of the pyramid again? I really want to see it. Do it for me, Bozy. Okay, no, he's just going to be boring and hang out on the ground. But you know what? It's consistent. <laughs> it works. I, I, I can't complain too much, but there will be an opposing chamber alt coming in from Endeavor, as well as three other alts on the side play, of St. Clair. Laird's bringing in some of that uh, some of that personal bias from their solo QKs in here. Just, why no, I just like color? seeing cool things, man. It's just, <laughs> no bias included. All right, all right, all right. That's fair, that's fair. We like to see the cool. We like to see the magical. We like to see the impossible become possible. And this is one of the chances. Around the corner, a little bit of swing Ooh. goes, but Gub with that line of sight annihilates the operator user, and Gub knows with that opt down, it means a chance to use that Viper's Pit. Viper's Pit is going to be really difficult to contend with. However, there is a Sova ult I could see potentially becoming very useful against this ult. Oh, it is. It could be a chance of Mystic Nyx. You get one, but can't make it a 2k. Borge is going to lock down a 2k of their own instead, but now the Hunter's Fury zipping around, diving and dodging. That's going to be two shots. Wow. Can't find it, and it's down to one player alive inside of the top edge. Is able to land it with the Aeris, but, I mean, Borge is just like, uh, yeah, this is... This is a little bit of pain. Brick, also, shout, you gotta shout go. to the camera work on that ult. That was that was real nice. Oh, I had yeah. a good time seeing that. Oh, Huge but Gov gonna get a to one tap team. headshot. Yeah. That's gonna be it. It is now into match, match point. point. One round away. St. Clair are on the edge of cementing a 2-0 start to their Valorant season here with the NJC AA. 
one more round, and that will be a 2-0 victory for St. Clair. If we can see uh, five straight rounds, actually four straight rounds, we will be going into overtime uh, if Lackawanna can step it up here. But, hey, step up they did. You know, that, that first game was very lopsided on Bayern. They did a really good job of making this one competitive on Breeze. However, it isn't over yet. JRC going to get a nice bounce. The lineup? Oh, Look at oh, that. You got that. <laughs> that was hot. It was so beautiful. And in the meantime, Mystic Nix was able to find one. Well, at least a little bit of a low tempo, but Brick able to find Gub and Boris finds a way at Brick. They are going to stabilize, so it's a 4v3. It's more that you could have, uh, more than you probably could have hoped for. The Nolk Band giving an extra life and opportunity in the lineup. Really not granting too much. Like there will be a rotation, though. but they're uh -oh. going to run into Bozy here. Hang That's on, cover scary. those flanks. Ooh, gets one. Oh. Not going to get two. It was looking good, and you, and you give the yeah. one. You give the one, right? Keep in mind, Darren is almost one tap here, but Globe is going to cover this one up, make the push a little bit more difficult, give some time to Joy Boy to get here. However, they will ignore the smoke, and they're just going to hop right through. Ooh. There's one. Good for two. Not going to get it. The bad swing. Down to a 3K. One left to lie. Joy Boy, what can you do? 10 HP in a dream and a half. You're hoping for a prayer to come down and be answered using every piece of utility. You do anything you can. But it's not going to be enough. No Endeavor avail. endeavors through, and it's a 13-8 to eclipse the 2-0 for St. Clair College. Hey, a heck of an effort from Lackawanna, though, especially on that map, too. They did a lot of stuff that was really gritty. Very, very impressive. And you know what? I would not be disappointed in this loss. This is one of the premier teams in the collegiate esports scene in St. Clair. And you made it very competitive for the most part <laughs> on that second map. You have nothing to be ashamed about, my friends. No, and I mean, and just imagine if this team is able to uh, personify this level of strength, right? This uh, understanding of Breeze into maybe other unique map picks, right? We're talking about the Pearl. We're talking about the Fracture. There is chan There are chances to just absolutely flub some of these other teams. And we've seen it, right? Going into playoffs, there's a reason that we have best of threes and best of fives. You have to show your strengths on all of them. You become a master of the unique, and it lends itself a certain strength that can be <laughs> that can be used against some of these other teams. But, of course, that goes the same for St. Clair, right? They came out with some great adaptability that I love to see. I mean, taking a look at just some of their players, right? It was, uh, I want to say it was Gov, right? One of the step-ups and then Aborge. These two were the ones that always, my eyes were kind of zoned in on. Yeah, the combination of those two in particular. You have Gub, who is one of the hardest defensive players I've ever seen in this game. And then you have Borge, who is really, really good at just pestering whatever team's coming in, you know. They're not necessarily an, an unstoppable offensive force, but what they are is really good on the sticks, really good at avoidance, and really good at baiting out some of the more aggressive util coming in from whatever team. Then that allows them to get the flanks that they need as well as pick up these kills. So the, the two of them, they're going to go places. Oh, yeah, and I can't wait to see them, even in the playoffs. I hope we get to cast them again because it was so much fun. But, of course, please, we are please, not done just yet. <laughs> yeah. Let's get them again. But right now, we are going to get an interview. We are going to get Gub coming in here to give us a little bit of insight about the start to St. Clair's run and what they hope to accomplish here at the NJC AAE Conference. So let's go ahead, send it to a quick break, get everything ready, and we'll be back in just a few. a bit more jrc just walks too bold as everything and gov follows up as well this round but board is starting to claw this one back a little bit with some really good usage of the jet util as well as marshall picks up a specter still not going to be enough and it is merely one man standing jrc on site has to deal with three of his competitors with a planted spike and yep not going to do it right now st Clair are going to go ahead and look for the defuse but in goes a little bit of a sonar dart really, really smartly down. But Borge gets a blind shot through the through the walls, and that leads an opportunity for the rest of the team. To yeah, finally gonna get that plant down. Brick has the recon drone out. Globe's gonna get the plant. JRC gets one hit, and that is a thrifty kill. To the south, they say we are gonna make it work. Mystic Nix finds one. Gov able to find another. But Globe evens it out and endeavors as Gibby those two to four kills. That's three. A bit of extra damage on their side. But with Globe already on the side, is going to lay down the play. No, they tried. Oh, my lord, they tried. Brick was able to find Darren's life. But Gub immediately answered back and said, no plan for you here today. 
brick on their own though. It's mm. gonna get the swing. The transfer is oh. in the just try and save and say, let me get some of those frags. There's one. We'll find one more. Is he gonna get Borge. it? You know what Borge can do? Gets the dash prep. He's gonna look to swing and try and make a moment to happen. So look the play up and finds a sleepy globe. What a tag right there, G. Gonna have to work your magic. Okay, Loba Sloba took a shot, now gonna be blinded. Able to spray down a one. Joy Boy is gonna fall. JRC, can you land a shot? You got the vandal in the hand, Globe. Waiting around the corner. And you are spawning yeah. Globe with a 4K. He's giving them a lot of momentum going forward. Darren trying to get some KO. Suppresses Endeavor and Globe are gonna trade. That's a huge pickup from Darren. Yes, it is. If you can get this out, it will be great. But look at that. The Colat Plus is gonna lay into that door. That's a huge flood of teammates. One, two, two. And they are moving like a, an experienced cleanup crew. Gub, last one alive, is going to fall. And Lackawanna, clean up that pistol with Corner. Gonna be a bit of a defuse from Globe. Excellent trade. Are they just gonna stick it? Yeah, they are. Oh. No, but they're not gonna do it. And the thrifty Globe and Nyx. Joy Boy trying to push through as well. Brick gets one. Darren, though, like I said, in the right moments, Darren can get these kills. And I think they were trying to catch uh, the rotation over to B. However, uh, no one on A moved. So there is going to be Bozy. Gets a flank. Gets one. Not oh, able to hit Gub. Seeing it coming to play in full force. Look at that. Just an angle on the side. Darren, I mean, you saw the arm and you took the swing. Beauty of a shot. Globe, though. What? Hold Another on. One. What? That's all JRC saying, hey. Someone's right around this corner. And Bozy said, yeah, I am. Globe able to find JRC. And now the pinch from Darren is able nice. to grab one or two. But my God. Borge is just like, uh, yeah, this is this is a little bit of pain. Brick, also, shout, you gotta shout go. to the camera work on that ult. That was, that was real nice. Oh, I had a yeah. good time seeing that. Oh, but Gov going to get a one-tap headshot. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup 2022 once again. I'm still Sephilins, but this time I am joined by the CEO of New Street, Eric, who's going to get to tell us about NFTs, which I'm really excited because I told you this before the interview. I'm, I know nothing. I'm like a newborn baby about this. Yeah. So I, I would love to hear <laughs> kind of about what you do, and then we can talk a little bit more about the esports side of things. Yeah, so absolutely. We'll get into the NFT side in a second. But just to quickly explain what I do, yeah, of um, course. Eric Witchin, thank you for the intro. Um, <laughs> CEO of New Street, and New Street is a media and analytics platform for collectors. Um, so you can think about it as like the, the world of collectibles has, has grown significantly over the last five to ten years. Um, and what's happened is we've, we've had a lot of marketplaces evolve, so places yeah. that are going to sell you things. Like if I want to buy a pair of sneakers, I have to go to no less than 10 to 12 websites in order to figure out the best price. So right. you know, the value proposition for us starts with, you know, as a collector, where can I buy these things on the internet and where can I get the best deal possible? And then furthermore, we add media and insights, um, you know, sort of like a financial technology company would do, but around things that I personally care about a lot more right, than stocks. Right. So, so that's, uh, that's us. Absolutely. So looking at it, you know, NFTs being one thing, esports being the other. Yeah. Where, where's the oh, link? Yeah. Where's the connection so, there? So first off, let's demystify NFTs a little bit. Oh, yes, please. So, so first of all, an NFT is, is, is the first time in human history that we've been able to prove that something digital is scarce. Yeah. You need to take that in for a second. So basically, you know, we've been creating things on the internet and with digital art and otherwise for many, many years. Uh, we're buying in-game items, we're, we're doing a bunch of things, and we've been taught that because you can copy and paste those things, they have no value, right? Enter the blockchain, and the blockchain allows us to be able to prove that something digital is truly owned by one particular sure, person. Sure. So you can copy and paste that thing as many times as so you want, but like you don't own it. Is it like a certificate then? It's absolutely like a certificate of authenticity, sure. certificate of ownership that could represent a digital asset or a physical asset just as equally. Right. There are people playing with this in, in real estate markets. I mean, so, you know, collectibles, uh, you know, is just, is just one of the areas that this thing is interesting in. But in terms of esports, I think it connects very, uh, very much to, um, you know, when you think about all the work that you do uh, as a gamer. Um, in these ecosystems, um, what happens if one day this ecosystem, this company that controls this ecosystem no longer... And we are back. Thank you so much, everyone, for waiting so patiently because we had the winners, St. Clair College, coming out 2-0 in their opening matchup here. It was through, uh, I believe, Bind and then, of course, on Breeze. 
A little bit of a struggle on Breeze, but still with the win, and I can't wait to see what they have to say because we have Gub. Gub, Gub coming on here to talk to us a little bit about their win and how they played. Gub, how are you feeling after that? I know game one was pretty clean, and then game two, a little bit of flubs here and there, but overall taking the victory. Yeah, to be honest, I was in a flow state, and when, when I do, I have <laughs> a good right. read on the game, and it's kind of hard to stop us, in my opinion. Like, I kind of know where everyone was on the map. It's pretty easy to throw some clutches out and whatnot. My aim was pretty decent today, so yeah. So uh, starting off on Breeze, or not Breeze, on Bind, obviously, uh, with a 13-2 victory on that one, how do you guys feel about that one? You know, what what, what was what was your thought process going into that first set? Uh, Bind is definitely one of our strongest maps. We've been practicing a lot recently and just rolling teams and scrims and matches and officials. So we were pretty confident going in. Everything went our way. We played good trades, a couple of good clutches here and there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, Gov, real quick, I just want to talk about that idea of, of clutching because I don't think anyone on your team exemplifies that quite as well as you do. I mean, I was saying it on Mike, you are an absolute defensive stalwart for your team. Thank you, uh, thank you. you. Know, of course. Why Why do you feel that that role is super important for you to play of all people? Um, I think it just comes with experience. I've been playing FPSs for a long time, so whenever I'm in those situations, I got the ice in my veins, you know? The clutches just come easy to me. I don't panic. And I just understand where everyone's at. So uh, map two, Breeze. That was a little bit of a harder <laughs> fight for you guys than uh, the bind one was. Uh, after you guys swapped over to offense, what kind of adjustments did you uh, audible to your team that you guys needed to make in order to uh, take the victory today? Um, we kind of just played off their comp. We knew that they're going to be really aggressive somewhere. So we just kind of played together, used our util up, uh, got the trades going into sites, and then played smart after that. So, Gub, you've made a lasting impression here today. The people in the chat love you. I was uh, taking a couple glances there mid-set. Uh, and the people are all or Gub fans. What do you have to say to the people at home who cheered you on today? You know, shout out to the fans. Shout out to the people that supported me along the journey. I hope they get to see more of me. I hope they get to see more of the school. And hope to bring more Ws. Of course. And, uh, I mean, that is... I think that's awesome already. Establishing that brand, right? Getting that going. But... I mean, sure, now looking that. past that even, you got uh, so much more to play, right? In this seven-week regular season, as we got... Who, who is that in the back? Who is that in the back? This is Borge, my crackhead. Hey! Borge. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. I don't, obviously, you can't hear us. Uh, ask him Ask him why he wasn't top frag this time. Oh, no, hey, no, Borge, don't do that. why weren't you top frag? No, 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 don't. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds much more rude coming oh, from you. I know. <laughs> don't worry, I keep him in check. <laughs> All right. I mean, you guys played phenomenally well, and the question, of course, is at, over the course of this season, right, we're going to see teams, uh, you know, like Lackawanna try and bring themselves up even further. So what are you guys prepping in advance? Are there any new maps that you're very excited to test out? Maybe the new Fracture or Pearl, or are you just, you know, going to give them a taste of the old 1-2 and really hone your skills in just those finite ways? Um, Our map pool is pretty deep. We're still early on in the season, so we got mm -hmm. a lot more to do, but... Any team can challenge us on any map. I'll tell them that. <laughs> I love it. The confidence there to go ahead and say, bring it on, no matter what map, no matter where we go. I'm very, very excited to see it. Gov, thank you so much for the interview. Congratulations on the victory here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, guys. Yep, have a good time. Go celebrate, my friend. I will. <laughs> all, right, all right, but that is going to conclude our production here today. Thank you all again so much for tuning in to this production of Esports U. Yeah. This is going to be a good time. Have a good one, everyone. We will see you all next time. Stay safe. Take care. My name is Dusty. I'm 24 years old, and uh, this is my first year at Bay State College and uh, first year towards um, my bachelor's there. Uh, but I've been going to college for a few years now, or several years now. Oh, what are you studying? Uh, right now, I am studying uh, human resource management. Uh, nice. In business. Yeah. Do you like Bay State so far? Yes. Yeah, it's been pretty good so far. It's only been one quarter, but I like it so far. So. And where are you from? Uh, I'm from SoCal. So I'm doing it uh, remotely from Southern California. So what games do you play? What's your main game? Uh, my main game is Smash Brothers, and that's what I compete in. So 
Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Okay, what character do you like? Uh, Wii Fit Trainer is my main character. So how has it been being part of a collegiate team at Bay State? Have you been on a collegiate team before? Uh, I've been on I've been on teams before. I don't think I don't know if I've been on a co- collegiate team before. Um, I think this is my first collegiate team, but it is really nice, and the teammates are really supportive, and I've met some cool people, so that's nice. But I definitely do have experience like with teams, so uh it's nothing like super new but it's always it's always good to be in a team you know have that support fresh team yeah that's cool so how long have you been playing smash i've been playing smash for about like seven ish years now well i've i've kind of played it since i was like really young but like competitively i've played it like seven years i played since the release of of smash 4 which is the previous smash game and now i've i've played into ultimate so Quite quite a while. What has been your proudest moment since playing Smash? That's hard to say because I've had I've honestly had a lot of good moments. It's just I feel like ev- I feel like every other week or every other month I have a new moment where I'm like, wow, that's the best I've ever played, which which feels good and makes it you know I keep I keep going for stuff like that. But um, every time I play in a play a tournament set and it feels really good and i feel like i'm playing the best i've ever played uh probably each each of those consecutive moments um i just had a tournament the a couple weekends ago in in las vegas where i placed ninth out of nearly 400 i think and i think that was one of the best i've ever played and that that felt really good so that was a really big accomplishment for me so you would definitely say over the past seven years you said that you've grown a lot in the game yeah i think i've grown a lot in the game and i think i've also grown a lot just as a person too um just like competition in general is like a lot of there's a lot of learning and there's a lot of you know uh, a lot of ways to approach it i've learned how to like how to teach other people as well because i do coaching as well stuff like that um so i've i've learned a lot through smash yeah mm-hmm. how long have you been doing the coaching part coaching i've been doing maybe a year and a half ish maybe almost two years i'm actually not sure on the number i think a year ish year and a half is probably closer to the right one but um yeah, that's been that's been a lot of fun too. It's it's really interesting because it gives you a different perspective on the game, and not only do, are you helping other people, but you you kind of help yourself in a way too because you can kind of see things from a, a different perspective, you know. So, how would you describe yourself? Do you like competing more or, or playing for fun? Or um, I'm definitely more of a competitor. Ever since I was young, like I remember I remember playing like board games with. Um, with like friends or something i think i was waiting for them to play and i think some of them were playing like just like house rules or whatever and i was like really really young and it like made me upset i'm like you guys aren't playing in the right way or whatever but like i've always been a competitor but at the same time like you have to have fun because if you're only a competitor and you're only competing and it's all seriousness like it's it's there's like a limit to that so like you have to have fun so definitely definitely both but i definitely lean towards the, the competitive sides of things so i like optimizing things and seeing the best thing you can do because it, it all started out with like uh it all started out with it just being fun because when i was younger i played different games and i originally just played them for fun and i played them all the time but i played them so often and i got so good at them to the point where uh it, it 